With nothing to hold us back, these are the songs of the wild. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is a brand new year, 2020. Can you believe that we are saying that? We are back in the 20s. I'm serious, 30 years from now, we're gonna be going back and calling these the 20s. That's crazy. Anyway, we hope you had an amazing holiday break and a start to your new year. Let us know what your 2020 resolutions are at hashtag COTW radio throughout the show. And speaking of, let's see what music we're gonna be sharing today. Stick around for the full hour because we have brand new Pixel Terror, Protostar, Crank Dad, and we're going to be dropping all new Cloud Nun. So let's get right into it. And starting us off, here is Tony Romero with Heatwave. Enjoy and welcome back to Monster Cats Call of the Wild.
Welcome back. We've made it. Carlo, how are you, buddy? Ricky, I am fantastic. I have been waiting. I was I set up my Santa list. I left out cookies and milk. I said all I want is CSL back and still I had to wait, but God, it was worth it. I'm oh, just so good ecstatic to be, to be back here with you again. Dude, it's, it is. Second half of the season this time. Uh, yep. It's still the same like groups, right? This is the first yes. time in, that we've ever seen this in CSL where we, we don't have two separate brackets from first to second half. We're keeping it rolling, but so, that's not to say that the action's stale because tonight, Ricky, we have two undefeated teams. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. University of Central Florida versus Georgia Institute of Technology. Both these teams had fantastic runs last year, right? Like both these teams have been strong in CSL historically. And mm -hmm. uh, this year's no excuse, like no, uh, like, yeah, exactly. Well, Nightmare came out of nowhere last year. Yeah, uh, they if did. You recall, they did, yeah. and they dominated. And now we're going to see them. This is our first taste we're going to get of them this year. So far, uh, anyone who has gotten a taste of them has lost. <laughs> they are, they're undefeated, right? They haven't even lost. They a, a are. Match. However, the scores don't line up. Let me double check here and confirm. So Georgia Tech six and zero, oh, and Nightmare is actually five and zero. Oh. So Georgia Tech does have one series more experience on them. Okay. So I but mean, neither just like, of these teams have met someone who's better than them yet. Oh yeah, That's, this is something I'm super excited about. Like these are these are teams that. Um, we've been following you know from year to year now and yes this is one i was really excited we just kind of found out last minute that they had to reschedule their match and it just so happened mm -hmm. to be on uh on our night here we so, are so lucky us lucky all the viewers who get to tune in now and watch such a fantastic game mm -hmm. definitely and well you said lucky us and it is it is we are lucky lucky to be here together with these great teams. I'm excited to see uh, how this game turns out. Do you think that we're going to see a 2-0? One of these teams will remain undefeated? Or are we uh, undefeated um, regarding uh, games played? Or do you think we're going to see, um, because these teams are so good, a 2-1 victory tonight? It could go 2-1, honestly. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's most likely. Yeah, I think sure. both of these teams have probably spent their break relaxing, not playing too much Dota, right? But mm -hmm. that being said, I, I I do I would not put it past them to have put a lot of uh, like time researching, getting prepared for this patch. We just came off the minor, which mm -hmm. by the way was the best minor in so long. That was so good. It was so fantastic to watch. I feel like all of the Dota content we're getting is just getting better and better regarding like production value and like tournament and uh, like that side of things, regardless of the gameplay. Like they're just they're just I mean the game. I mean, Actually, pretty good too but yeah. it's it's they're entertaining events and uh you know uh we've had, we've had an entertaining season this year and i think uh ricky we're moving towards a very entertaining event too at the end of the uh oh my season, gosh. season i i like the with how this season has played out so far all the different teams that we have i'm so excited just to see who's gonna make it to the land yeah. finals at the end of the year oh, yeah. at this oh, point yeah. it's a toss-up there's like 10 legitimately qualifying teams at least and you, there's oh. no clear front runner in my books, right? Like there, there's certain teams that are right at the top of the power rankings that we see every week, but any of these teams could go to land. Any of these teams could get knocked out in the quarterfinals. Like it, it's hard to say. Oh, for sure. Like, and I, I agree with what you're saying because in regards to the power ranking, Stony Brook University has been number one or number two on every single power ranking. Um, but they're, they aren't the clear, like technically they are, but they're not, they're not the clear front runner. They are just the front runner. And that's just because they played more games just like tonight. You know, uh, Central Florida and Georgia, both are undefeated teams. Very impressive, demonstrating how talented they are. And but it doesn't change the fact that uh, Georgia Tech has a better score. And it's just because they played more games. There's no, but there is uh, going back to it. There's no definitive leader right now. Um, this season is, you know, it's going to be filled with teams having to prove their worth against other talented teams, which is actually exactly what this match is tonight. Oh, we're finally yeah. going to see two teams that haven't lost yet. We're going to see what does it take to take one of these amazing teams down. Speaking of matches tonight, you know what's already started? They're ready to go. They're Let's ready to go. go. I'm ready, go. To go. Right ready to go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Oh, my gosh. The draft. Here we are. We've <laughs> made it. <sighs> uh, what's going on with Georgia's banner? I feel like this is a mistake Georgia makes every year. This is the third every year in a row I've seen this exact year. same banner. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's not a mistake yeah maybe it's not it's intentional maybe maybe they you know esports programs have <laughs> issues with budgets and maybe they that's as far as the budget got them yeah it could be After absolutely banner. speaking of banners a nightmare look very at good. that very, very, very clean i love it pick. It's, All right. it's just smooth let's talk about the draft the first okay. six bands we have hold on hold on does nightmare have to pick bane 
in the lore, Dyer like team. Nightmare. Ooh. I hope Think not. Okay, <laughs> so the Omni first pick I really do like. It, mm -hmm. it it is shown to be probably the best offlaner in the game, or one of the best offlaners in the game besides Doom. So it's just a very safe pick. It enables your yep. heroes. It's just solid. Why not? And 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 as uh, we see, Doom is not in the pool anymore. Ten yeah. seconds. Remember. I mean, that hero is gonna be banned the whole series. No, there's no way any of these teams can do. The thing that I find to be the most interesting is the Slark ban. Um, everything else yeah. here makes sense to me. I think Phantom Lancer is incredibly strong. Dying Slark team. being um, one of the heroes that normally doesn't res like isn't reserved a first phase ban because of these other heroes. For instance, like Vengeful Spirit, who just got picked. Mm. There's also Disruptor still in the pool, who's been getting picked a ton. Um, Abaddon yeah. is still in the pool, still one of the best five positions in the game for so many reasons. Is It, it seems like uh, heroes that can sustain are very popular screaming. or oh, very absolutely. powerful. At the moment. Like having saves and uh, in Dota right now is super important because at, at this point in the, in the meta, I feel like if you take one bad fight, you lose objectives. And these games are so quick that if you fall behind, there's not a lot you can do to come back um yeah game teams will just like go high ground and end it so the, these these heroes that can keep heroes alive just like you said sustain and continue uh -huh. to put pressure on the map um and take objectives t tend to be uh the strongest which you know eventual spirit when she dies she's not really dead she still provides her yeah. aura which is really good and she has a save potentially two saves with her alt um, and those heroes are also uh, good in lane because it's hard to starve them. Even if you're if if the opposing lane is winning against the hero that has sustain, the hero that has sustain is just showing up. They're able to just sit in lane a lot longer. Mm -hmm. I get a lot out of lanes regardless Ooh, of the situation. Ooh, that's a that's a pick I don't see very often is Lion. Um, and to me, I'm actually really worried about this opening from Nightmare. This the double stun opener. You don't like it. Well, it's not necessarily that, but like, which of these two heroes farms in the four position? You know, like, like yeah. I'm assuming it's the lion. Yeah, I assume it's the lion, but I see what you're saying. It's it's still going to be a bit awkward, and yeah. relying on him to not just be a, a second position five. Compared to a lot of the other four positions in the game, heroes like Disruptor, for instance, um, who can who can push waves, get farm, and then there there he is, and then put that into a very like impactful items like just a single yules and an aether lens on this hero is mm -hmm. insanely powerful you can you can glimpse from farther away but mainly just yules right into, into static storm kinetic field and uh nightmare don't have a real good save outside of venge swap at this point so which i mean it's a good one it is a good yeah. it is a very good ability yeah for sure but yeah yeah i see what you're saying and um Omni Knight is uh, he, he helps out quite a bit against uh, like Nightmare's uh, lineup. Two heroes in are just two heroes that if they if they go for a gank, they're just gonna go hit all their buttons on someone. Omni mm -hmm. Knight's a hero that potentially can save that as well as uh, he's gonna do stuff. He's gonna do something with farm. Yeah. Um, across the Omni Knight heal and the Omni Knight shield, which has been changed three hundred times, <laughs> um, and I guess his ult yeah, as well is gonna help people. I do now, like the Drow ban. That's like essential, right? You don't want to give him Venge yeah. Drow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it never ends. It's one of the combos that's made it through years of Dota. Yeah, Venge even Drow. all the different changes and everything, Venge Drow is still to this day an iconic combo. Mm -hmm. it's very strong auras. What, uh, is there any, is there any hero that Radiant you want to see against, like, an Omni Knight Disruptor? That seems very difficult to play into. I mean, Drow is honestly one of the best heroes against the Omni Knight lane. Um, just because she puts out a good damage, she she puts out good damage can can slow Omni Knight. Has Gust as well to help set up kills if they get a rotation. But she doesn't really get bullied out of lane, and that's you know why it's a decent matchup for her. Um, yeah. Ten seconds remaining. So you got you got to come up with something else for that safe lane. Slark is one of the other like main heroes who's already banned out as well. So I've been liking Slark a lot recently. Yeah. How do you feel about him? I think Slark might be one of the best one positions in Dota 2. I, I, I really? think he's top three for sure. Really? So what what changed your opinion about him? What put him in that? What put him in a top three position in your eyes? His Aghanims is insanely strong, Dota but he's also really good against all the offlane matchups. That's the thing when it comes that's, down. That's, that's good. As yeah. offlane changes, the cores that you can pick into them change, right? And so yeah, yeah. heroes like Doom, Omni Knight, um, Underlord, all of these heroes that excel in the offlane, 
uh, Sark is great against. And so it yeah. just it just puts him back in the meta. His Aghanim Scepter is bonkers. Um, it's fun too. It's so fun. It's, an, it's so strong because Roots have just been getting buffed and buffed and buffed over time. So having yeah. consecutive Root back-to-back -back is just crazy. So Oh, yeah. Plus the talent is... I've always felt the Slark talent is one of the best yeah. ones. Like... Just because it, it's it's good for solo play, it's good for team play. Like it's just never bad. What what is it? It turns it to like a seven total seconds. Is that the number? Do you know? Um, pull it up. Yeah. Pull it. Oh, no, it's, just, it's an extra one second, turning it to four point two five. Wow. Yeah. yeah so not seven. 4. Yeah. 2. I was gonna say it, it goes from three to it goes from like three to four or something. That's what I yeah. was thinking. But yeah, it's a it's a long leash. Like it's no joke. Mm -hmm. This is, it slurks a hero, it's dangerous to be near him, just like Ursa. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kunkka, always a good hero again, just like Venge uh, Drow combo. Yeah, Kunkka, we haven't been seeing as much in the mid lane, um, but it could just be a comfort pick, really. The hero, yeah. he offers he's a like lot of good. damage, he's just overall very tanky, doesn't lose a lot of lanes to a lot of mid laners. Uh huh. He offers some catch as well. Like, yeah. yeah he's... I feel like that's all of that Nightmare right now, like that's their three heroes. They just have three heroes that'll fit into like any lineup. Yeah. <laughs> Five seconds. <laughs> I like nothing is revealed. Yeah, I will say I'm a little worried that they picked the mid laner at this point because there are heroes like Monkey King still in who mm -hmm. excel against the Kunkka in the mid lane. Templar Assassin, also fantastic. Um, I don't really think of the the OD being banned is the big one. That hero really is not a good matchup. Yeah. Um, well, we have Pain's in too. She could do well. She's fun too. I like her. I, I, I'd be happy to see some Queen of Pain now that we're back in CSL action. Now, I guess we don't have to worry about Slark anymore. It's fun to talk about though, but he's not going to be in this game. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking for the second support for Georgia Tech? Is there a. Uh, do you think. First of all, do you think Disruptor's five? Four. Disruptor is pretty much exclusively a four now because he needs. Okay. He's, he's so good with items. He's one of the best supports in the game with items. Like yeah. if Disruptor gets like three items, he's in, he's in hey. incredibly strong. Um, this is like the combo I remember making up when I was a like a complete Dota noob, where I thought <laughs> like uh, kinetic field with Lich Alt, Kunkka Alt, and uh, Bristleback would be the best team ever. And then we, my friends and I tried it, and it did not work how I imagined in my head. <laughs> That's how I just never thinking. does, right? Kinetic field chain frost. It's unstoppable. <laughs> Yeah, I think Lich is just a Five, just a safe seven, pick for them. It's good. It reduces again, yeah. a lot of physical damage, which both Venge and Kunkka will have. Um, Chain Frost always really strong from the five position. It's one of the it's one of the most it's probably the, the highest damage spell you can offer in the five position if it works out. Oh, yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, very easy. Like it's three bounces, two bounces. It's gone. Yeah, one of them. It's well, he good. contributes yeah, he's, a lot. He's a strong laner too. Yeah. Sinister Gaze is crazy, and his Aghanim Scepter, if he ever gets one eventually, is nuts. Ooh, look at this Bloodseeker. Okay, this is making so me that... think this is offlane Kunkka. It definitely has synergy with Kunkka in teamfights, that's for sure. Yeah. So you think an offlane Kunkka mid-seeker and they're saving their safe lane? No, I think this is a safe lane seeker. I, I don't think okay. you can run Bloodseeker in any other lane, because it's, it's not bad against Omni Knight, right? Like, if he Purification heals you, you can just then Blood Rage up, try and, and uh, heal off a little bit. But he's really good at securing range creeps with Blood Rite, and so Omni Knight has to decide whether he wants to purify his own range creep to, yeah. like, deny the the kill of the range creep or uh, just let it go. Ah, jeez, that's that Ricky metagame stuff right there. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. Now we're looking for. Well, I guess we're we're going back to Georgia Tech here. We got two supports. We got an off lane, mid versus Kunkka. Kunkka safe against pretty much everyone. Hey. Yeah, I mean, he's there's a couple matchups that are pretty unfavorable, but I think Georgia Tech's trying to figure out if this is a mid or an off lane Kunkka at this point. Yeah, off lane Kunkka doesn't feel super strong to me, um, but he kind of fills the role of giving auras to your team if he just builds like tanky items like if he builds a pipe this game he, he, they're in really good shape yeah what but. do you think uh yeah actually i really like that building yeah playing playing kunk in the offlane and, and getting him like the, the like the aura offlaner um i was gonna say what do you think of uh leshrac as the final hero for nightmare save for we haven't seen all george's heroes yet leshrac seems good it could work I think it could be fun. Uh, yeah, I want to see this pick. There we go. Oh, that's the better kinetic field for the Chain Frost. 
<laughs> I mean, if, if, if like this is you know faceless voids alt chronosphere is is like one of the most notorious like combo setter uppers mm -hmm. alley-oop moves in the game and like this is the lineup for it right like faceless voids hits any amount like any group of two heroes or any two plus hero chronosphere and you are not surviving from that well actually i guess they do have the vengeful swap yeah, but, they have uh, swap, but it's still like you're you will be killed, right? That, that's that at the end of the day, you're not getting out of it. You're gonna get static. You're just gonna get kinetic fielded and not be able to get away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Real weird inv invoker ban there, unless that's just like <laughs> a real big comfort hero for Georgia yeah. Tech because that hero is terrible. <laughs> invoker yeah. is like bottom five heroes in dota right now that guy's Dang. unplayable he is so what bad a time to be alive slark the king invoker the new invoker is so bad i can't i can't imagine why anyone would pick that hero unless you are just a level 25 invoker and you're smurfing like that's like the only scenario now, what what's the change that makes you feel that way about invoker everything about his kit is too slow like he 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 needs too many levels. He like heavily relies on Midas and Sunstrike kills to come online, which is just He's not kind of reliable. Stuck in the past. Old, yeah, old th this meta is way too fast for him. Like he yeah. just does not come online to like all these other mid heroes. I see. Yeah, that, that yeah that definitely. If your if your gameplay style doesn't fit with the gameplay, that's good. It's a pretty good reason your hero's not that strong. Dire team pick. Okay, rounded out. Yeah, that's a mid dominator. So TA is, is probably one of the better mid lanes right now, and it's a really safe pick. I would really, really, really like to see a, just a Huskar last pick and remove Kunko to the off lane. I think that's how Nightmare wins this game, if they, if they want to win in draft. Because it's good against Void, it's good against TA. Um, the big issue is they have so much physical damage that the, the lane matchup is fantastic for Huskar, but the game matchup here is really bad for him. So... <laughs> It's hard to say. Maybe you pick a different counter than the Huskar, but it really just... Uh, I don't see Nightmare's draft coming together at, like, the 20-minute mark. They need mark. a lot, yeah. What is, I'm just worried, like, what do they do when they get... There's this Vengeful... Can, it, this Vengeful Spirit right now feels like it's going to make or break the game with his swaps, because depending on the initiation, Jesus. Vengeful Spirit might be the only one that has a play. That's a much better pick. I really like that's, that. That's safe. That uh, yeah, that can punish Chronosphere. Yeah, kind of that's way. it's really good against uh, pretty much all of the cores for Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tanky in general too. Benefit like Razor benefits a lot from Coco's rum, which is yeah. really nice, right? So Faces Void if he tries to go for a Chrono and get Static Link first has to run outside of the Chrono AOE. So there's there's a lot of Center, there's a lot of like kind of benefits to the razor pick here. I'd expect this to be razor mid Kunkka offlane at this point because and you, you can't static link faces void, he just immediately time walks it. Yeah, well, and uh, this is now two glimpse targets, right? And yeah. glimpse has uh, um, especially early on, glimpse is a really long cooldown, but you have to choose are you glimpsing the blood seeker, are you glimpsing the razor, uh, or potentially you're going to try and glimpse someone who got bench swapped. Uh, it's a lot of pressure on disruptor to make the right call, and if both uh uh static linked uh razor and a um i don't remember what's it bloodthirst on bloodseeker a bloodthirst bloodseeker running at you disruptor can only get rid of one of them yeah uh, actually if they look at the they're actually really lo lacking lockdown now that i look at George yeah Matt. that's that's ex i was gonna say both teams don't have a lot of lockdown they besides the venge lion um their lockdown is pretty much like Kunkka as far as the, the cores yeah. go right because neither Bloodseeker or Razor really have a reliable form of lockdown. Yeah. So the, well, the X into Bloodseeker's abilities is very strong, though. So we'll Oh, see. yeah, for sure. And I, I honestly, I'm, I'm really favoring um, Prepare for Nightmare battle. just because of the, the stuns. Like, it's like, it's just like both teams don't really have any lockdown. I'll go with the team that has like at least a little bit. I, uh, I'm going to go with Georgia Tech, I think. Just, I, mainly think just, I completely understand why you would say that. <laughs> I'm going Georgia Tech just because I think their team uh, strategy is just easier. And when it comes to a lot of CSL games, I usually go with the easier to execute strategy. Oh, for sure. And the Nightmares draft is going to heavily rely on this Razor having a phenomenal game. Where Georgia Tech, if either uh, TA or Void do well, I think they win. Just because the mm -hmm. the Omni Knight Disruptor Lich is very strong. 
and those are void and ta are very hard heroes to shut down especially ta that's kind of that's kind of like ta's role you pick ta as just like a hero that no matter what you could potentially just take the game by yourself you don't need any synergy to be effective you're really strong in lane yeah i i'm looking i mean we've seen this once before the omni void right when you heavenly grace a faceless void late, late game and he has the cooldown on his uh time time walk he he can't die unless you can burst him and there is yeah. no burst on the side of nightmare yeah they got to get the uh the lion finger and and pray yeah all right top rune fight Okay, I love fighting with Blood right there because it just puts so much pressure. But three heroes from Georgia Tech, they're going for the Vengeful. That's going to be an easy first blood. You take that money, it's an extra 200 gold. Georgia Tech already uh, stating a nice 1 0 on kill score. Yeah, that was sick. I mean, they, they got three bounty runes on the side of Nightmare, but losing a hero there, um, never, like, never really worth it. Um, and that's honestly a, a move made by a lot of, like, just higher tier teams like what they'll do is they'll send three to one rune and try and contest and give up the other two and even if they lose the rune they usually can secure first blood so that's what we see in this scenario i like that play very well done razor versus ta two lane dominators is there one big favorite obviously razor TA has to razor us. crushes this lane okay. it like razor should crush this lane if played yeah. correctly Dad, razor should curious. absolutely <laughs> destroy this lane Oh, bottom lane, Wolgot's Courier. Wolgot's courier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wolgot went a little long. bit far up there. Now, not only... Um, he went up far for the Courier, he took a lot of damage, but he got out. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that nice ward placement, too. A lot oh, of harassment yeah, coming out on both side. lanes. God, poor Lich, man. Dealing with Lion, dealing with Tidebringer. Like, it's obviously you're hitting Lich, not the Faceless Void. Yeah. <laughs> I think this Kunkka is going to have a pretty good lane as far as finding farm. Ooh, Torrent. With Hits tanks. on Mole. That's a slow. They got Nothing this. from Lion. Here we go. Some damage. Lion, get that auto attack in. Don't even need it. Tidebringer okay. comes up. He held the Tidebringer. I like that. That was a smart play. Very well done. As I say, I think Kunkka should back. farm fairly well. He doesn't get shut down too hard by Faces Void just because he's pretty tanky. Five and armor he's right doing now. Sustained damage to Void, right? So Void, Void would rather go against Burst that he can re, uh, uh, time walk back. Exactly. But if he's just taking a little bit of damage over time, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, Lion wants to go for the mana drain. He's taking a lot of damage for it. I think it's worth it, though, honestly. Yeah. Shutting down Lich's mana pool this early is really strong. Yeah. Because Lich, now that he doesn't have like that mana regen talent, heavily relies on like mangoes and stuff, because his spells yeah. are really, really Very, costly. Yeah. They're all triple digit, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, all triple digit mana costs. Potential Spear might be dead top lane. Omniot's uh -oh. coming in. Good kinetic field. We'll turn around the magic missile, slowing him down. Remember that the uh, um, Disruptor spell, Thunderstrike, gives vision. They're going to get it. Yeah, Thunderstrike does a lot of damage. It's one of the main reasons where I'm seeing him picked a lot more. Just because it's it's low cooldown ability, does a lot of damage. It also pushes waves in the mid game, so you don't have to yep. like commit much. Yep. It's just a just a good thing. Ooh, Ooh TA found side. a DE rune in the mid lane. That actually Here helps go. out a ton. Razor might Static be dead. Link. Nope. TA is the Ooh, one with a okay. lot of damage. Razor. Ooh. Pops the healing potion. Breaks it with the side blade. Very slick play. That's what I want from a TA. I want a pub stomp player. I don't want any safe farming stuff. I want him just beating people all game. This is huge. Like, th this lane is normally severely favored for Razor, and oh, the God. fact that she got a DD rune mm -hmm. um, allows her to have, you know, the 14 CS that she has. She'd probably be sitting at, like, 5 or 6 otherwise. So I love that. It. That's the rune you want is TA. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's like, completely lane-changing. So Razor's got his work cut out for him now to try, and, to try and come back in this lane. He's faring himself a salve right now as well. Speaking of regen, Lich has gotten quite low bottom, taking a lot of harass. Um... And on bottom lane, Faces Void actually are leading CSR. He's doing quite well against Kunkka. Yeah, that's expected, right? I think like I think when Kunkka gets levels, it'll it, he might be able to get in the lane more. Yeah. Level three. The thing is, is Void's base damage is so high, one of the highest of all the agility heroes. And he's a uh, monster in the lane. Yeah, it's I mean, Quelling Blade, easy last hits. Yeah. Lich is caught again. Oh, this poor guy, man, he's struggling. He's hitting all of his spells. He has a full wand, actually. Yeah, he's gonna be oh, fine. Get some out of there. How do you feel? Oh, but this whole time he's giving um he's giving thirst to topside. If doing anything with it though? Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to bully out this Omni Knight. Yeah. Yeah, as I can see why you were saying he's a great laner. He is doing a great job top. 
thing is, this Bloodseeker, like, doesn't have a terrible time, but it's... Like, he's still finding farm, right? He's got 15, but yeah. at the same time, the Omni Knight's sitting at 14. So, yeah, both off laners Omni are doing do really well. Mm -hmm. Some damage from the support stop. We're not going to see a kill on Vengeful Spirit. She though. might the die, actually. Shield is con committed. What is going on? Mm. Going deep for her. I, was gonna, I thought there was a couple more ticks on that Thunder Strike. Yeah, maybe. But, uh. It was close. I mean, that's a lot of damage. Gets the salve out of her. Yeah, definitely worth it. Back. Spells have been used. Here we go. Blood right, but no, the communication isn't there. Vengeful Spirit hesitates. Yeah, they doesn't throw the magic missile. Actually, they throw it late coming out. It was good. The bounty that was room. nice. That was really good. I didn't realize the bounties were spawning. That was really well played yeah. by Venge. She actually yep. gave yep, up the blood right. right damage to secure bounty, and I think that's way better. Yep. Definitely. For the team. Uh, oh, career warrior? type top. Oh my Peace. God. How many times have we seen this? Two in favor of Georgia Tech now. And that's the blood seeker player. courier too. Oh, and speaking of support, Lich bottom. Oh, he gets X tricky. He's coming right back, but is he in danger? No, I think Kunkka's the one in danger. He's trying to get the the bat the tiebringer, but Faceless Void was positioning nope. really well there. Great job. The line doing a little bit of damage. The Void's in trouble. Here we go. Give him a tiebringer. Oh, he wants to keep oh, that lane safe. He cleaves off the mark for both of them. Yeah, top side though. Now we have even more action. Disruptor's in trouble, but he has Omni Knight's Heavenly Grace on him. Is he... Wow, he is so He's tanky zooming. with that. Omni Knight wants to go, and he goes for the heal. He gets oh. the Vengeful Spirit, baiting his support for kill on the enemy. He might support. get the Omni Running here. The He's blood so right. fast. Bloodseeker is seeking his blood, Ricky. What? We are seeing it live. He lets he stops seeking the blood, Ricky. What? We're seeing it live. That was, that was a kill, Bloodseeker. You had him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe it's. Maybe he was losing the speed buff from the lingering one from uh, I'm, I mean, Disruptor, I guess. There's still a half HP Lich bottom, and the Omni was nearly dead. He was going to zoom down that lane. Yeah, That's surprising. Oh. I, could, I, I think he sh should have gone for that, because he, he definitely regens under the tower. He could have either forced the rotation from the Lich or the TA, and yeah. uh, either of those is a win-win, because he uh, just outruns Lich them. bottom, Ricky. Lich bottom Ricky, maybe the courier bottom Ricky, the another cur courier bottom <laughs> Come Ricky. Come on, Followed guys. Sun, no torrent. Yeah, he goes for the taunt. Oh boy, the counter. Three couriers, two for Georgia Tech, one for UCF. How many couriers have we seen die in this game? Three total now. Two bottom, one top. Void okay, another back. scrimmage top. The side lanes are getting insane. A great double here from Omni Knight, putting him in the middle of Vengeful He's and Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is going to pop. There it is. Yeah. Vengeful walks away, unable to stay in a lane against the Omni Knight and the Disruptor. Good catch. I did not see that one. I was too busy watching the shenanigans bot lane. Uh oh. Vengeful's Never mind. She got caught. She's getting beaten. That hammer, oh, that heal, no. that beat down from Georgia Tech. Dude, this this lane is insane. Omni Disruptor, man. You can't give it's this to them next great. game for sure. Yeah. It's they way love too strong. This. Static Link deals like one damage middle. Nothing's going on. Who would have thought Razor TA would have been the most boring lane in the series? Well, actually, Cat might have got my tongue. Is that the right expression? TA is chasing Razor up the hill. Razor forced to pop and out, get a fake rotation in from a teammate. Eats his south. Definitely goes in TA's favor. You have a sentry? Okay, he does. I was going to say, the only way Razor loses this lane is if he doesn't deward the traps in the mid lane. And he needs to get a sentry down and deward this. I see because, a sentry, but it's not Razor's. Yeah, he's got yeah, one in right his pocket. There, there he goes. Because what There's happens... No, uh, oh, go. This is what we're seeing right now. Is what happens. Yeah. Oh my but Zadok Link up Almost gets him with that, that side blade. Yeah, and when Zadok Link's down... Ooh, yeah, rupture top, top side. Here's the rupture. Is he going to stop chasing this time? No way. Vengeful's going in. Here we go. Big heal. Bloodseeker dropping low. Doesn't get the last hit, right? So he doesn't get TA's the rotating. She's coming up. She has uh -oh. invis. Here we go. Where we go? Oh, find him. Go right on top of him. He just hit himself with the blood rage. He really wants to get the sentry down. They, they know they're there. <gasps> He's the running. Sentry. They know something's fishy. Doesn't break the mana potion. Tia's going to return mid. Great sentry from Vengeful. Fantastic wow. awareness. That was, uh, maybe luck. I think that was just luck because I think the sentry was blocking the camp and they had tried to stack uh, earlier. So I don't think they knew uh, TA was coming. Well, there we go. Oh, you know what? Maybe. Lucky. They have the ward there on the top rune, so they might have seen that she yeah. picked up an invis. But what I, I was going to... I'm going to go back to what I was going to say about the TA matchup yeah. mid. Um, something that's very interesting about the TA mid lane is the way you lose this lane is when she hits level 6, if you can't get rid of her traps, you cannot contest her lane at all. 
So yeah, if she gets two traps down, like one on her high ground and one on the other, um, you have to watch your positioning a ton, and you can't gank her either. So it's it just makes her so much stronger of a lane presence. She can secure kills by herself as opposed to requiring a rotation. So yeah, it's it's a big deal. She she has a uh, especially with uh, doing well in lane. She has such a presence in the mid game. She's just extremely dangerous. And I love how TA is one of the heroes that uh, can take advantage of like strong solo play. Like she doesn't need someone to be roaming around with her. She's very dangerous on her own. Mm -hmm. So something to point out, uh, Bloodseeker is rotated bottom, which makes Faces Void have to leave, right? He can't contest Rupture Bloodright. He, he just dies to that. Yeah. So he he's out into the jungle now. TA might get scouted here at the roar at the rune. This is an excellent boat. Hex, this is level six Kunkka. Hail boat, hay static link, everything but the kitchen sink. TA is a huge she's still kill. alive. Kinetic field is not gonna really do anything, and she does you die to all three dead. of them as she should. Yeah, that's a fantastic rotation there coming out from uh, the lion and the uh, the Kunkka. Because yep. they need to shut down that, that TA um, as best as possible. This is the point in the game where she starts to pull ahead if she's given space. Yeah. And uh, if she gets that early Desolator blink, she becomes a real problem. Speaking of uh, space, we're looking at net worth here. And uh, two heroes on Nightmare. Well, actually, Omni Knight pulls into second. Uh, three of the top, or two of the top three um, net worth are all on Nightmare. However, it's neck and neck and neck and neck and neck. Yeah, all top neck, six, right? All cores are pretty even. Yep. The only real difference job. is the Kunkka and then the supports. Yep. But yeah, it's it's this is probably one of the closest early 10 minutes of the game. Bottom lane, there's the Chrono. Yep. Here we go, Chain Frost, Chronosphere. Everything's coming up. Bloodseeker will fall. Yeah, Great. that'll do it. That'll take him out for sure. Yeah, that that's um. I, I don't. I wouldn't really fault the Blood Seed for that one. The there has to be a support behind him in this bottom lane. Yeah. He can't be sitting there solo. Well, uh, it looks like Lion was just the, the Chronosphere zoned him right out. But now no, he just TP'd in. Here. He TP'd oh, into the outpost is what it was. I see. Pace Mid lane. Out. Disruptor's up there with a smoke. He's got kinetic. Oh yeah, and Static Storm crushes TA because it just eats right through her refraction. Well, no, it's uh, Disruptor's on. Oh, duh, yeah, what yeah. am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw him smoked and I was like, oh, this actually could be good. Uh, yeah. I mean, if they, if they can catch Razor, it's big, right? They need to st It's the same thing. Shutting down these mid laners is really important. He's going drums, which mm -hmm. um, I guess is like more, is a kind of standard item for, for Razor, but. Yeah. yeah. We'll see what he goes yeah, after that. Helps him. The broom handle, not benefiting from the melee attack range. All right, both supports bottom here for Nightmare. They did yep. see them run behind the tower, so the lion, and yeah, they're not gonna be able to get onto the to the void there. This just allows them to secure the tower. I like this. Yep. Uses the press, pressure from uh, Finger of Death. Uh, Georgia Tech is aware the Finger of Death has not been used, so yeah. You know, then wherever lion goes, dangerous. Yeah, exactly. And you pointed out earlier, right? Like void is. At this stage of the game, is really not happy if he gets uh, yeah. if he gets oh, rotated yeah. on because they can kill him very easily with the finger yeah. death. And nice might be a disruptor they go for smoking out. Now does Lion use finger of death here just to get the stack going? Uh, for any kill is worth glimpse. it. I think, There's yeah. the rupture. Here we go. Swap. He's going nowhere. Yeah, Every single kill. alt used. Lion gets the stack. Yeah, absolutely worth it. That sentry is actually just outside that sentry. Um, Fat Joe placed on the high ground there. Um, Barely. Same with the nice. ward too. I, you never really <laughs> want a ward that's or sentry that's yeah, high ground. Yeah. You typically want a ward or sentry next to it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get vision another way. Like yeah. Wave you have terror. wave of terror, right? You don't need to. Exactly. You don't yeah. need to ward the high ground. Mm. Oh well, that that's something uh, to learn from when the when they watch the replay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, still top that word. And he's Razor's item higher level than TA. Perfectly, by the Something way. Something I didn't expect to see. I think it was that one kill, right? The, in the, in the yeah. river there. That really made a difference. Takes her off right. the map for about 30 seconds. But yeah. Kunkka has Assange going straight Halberd, which is so good this game. As long as he's not chronoed, he just eliminates TA and Void um, for that moment in the team fight. Helps keep his heroes alive. Absolutely perfect. Dyer's exactly what I wanted to see. Smoke from Georgia Tech. Top, Ricky, Kunkka, and Lion are in trouble. Lion, no alt. Omni, fantastic bait. Setting There's up for two. 
double chronosphere. Lion will be the first to fall in a bad position, but they know Kunk is up top. Following it up with the kinetic field, he's not going anywhere immediately against the Coco's run button. This is gonna make boat. it very tanky. A triple boat! Kunkka might be the one on the aggressive now. Here comes, Here comes Razor. Razor, his second appearance in a fight with the chain thrust coming out. Very dangerous. Maybe not as dangerous as a Razor who has almost a maxuration. Static link rocking on for an extra 132 damage. You are not going anywhere. Omni Knight surrounded by Nightmare, taken down. That was Two a, for one in favor of Nightmare. Yeah, that was sick. It was a really good call from Georgia Tech to make that rotation. Unfortunately, they don't find a kill on the Bloodseeker. And then they trade, you know, 2 for a, a support, and they're likely yeah. to lose their top tier 1 tower as and, well. And Lion died when he didn't even have finger up. Like, if Lion's going to die, this is actually the best time for him to die. And he's just getting free XP mid right now. TA can't really yep. secure the kill, so... Well, there go. very impressive rotations from Nightmare. That's the those are the type of calls that are going to win you a game. That's that's team play. Did they TP into the shrine or into the outpost? I didn't quite see. I'm uh, assuming Razor they was one. definitely the tower. Yeah, Razor came that. in on the tower. I saw that. Ooh, bottom lane. Maybe Lion's yeah. in trouble here. here we go. He's got vision. There's going to be a big glimpse. They found him. Don't get a double impale. They're actually going to commit static storm to make sure. Oh, he got he had a double impale for a second if he would have went for it there. He's and still he's dead. Been caught. There's a kinetic trap. There's a side trap. There's every type of trap down here. All sorts of stuff. Royal jelly. That's just been sitting on a, on TA for so long. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about item uh, items. Okay. So Razor's gonna go for halberd as well. I'm all for it. I think these are super good items for them. How mm -hmm. like double halberd this game is legit. It makes t Razor tanky. It also oh, gives him the bonus healing. Yeah. And, and look at Razor's items right now. Actually, I love this combo. Grove bow, faded brooch, dude. This hero's actually suits. really sick for a Razor early on, where he just needs like he, he just worries about his abilities. Static link is bonus for him. Well, it uh, it uh, it like allows the static like Grove bow works on static link, I think, right? So the the break yeah. range is farther, or is that not how it works? Uh, I don't. Is is static link uh, related to attack range? Uh, no, just 250 greater than the cast range, it looks like. So it doesn't, ah, yeah. yeah. As I was wondering, I was like, I couldn't remember if it was attack range or cast range. Ah. Even, even though, the, with, um, like, it, it's great. It's, those are both great items for Razor. And look at this, Razor static link goes right on the Omni Knight. Walking right into the degen aura, not even scared. Omni Knight's gonna get away, but uh, 128 static link damage. Make it easy for Razor for the next little while. And it yeah. seems like Georgia Tech is on the defensive. Uh, TA is the only one not scared of the river. She has Deso though, which is really That's strong. Right. So you have to be That's careful really of the Deso. Oh my god, a clumsy net. Hey, Does for it a get razor. better than that? He, I was like, Razor needs a TP cancel this game. <laughs> I just thought, I was like, if Razor could get a Yules or a way to stop TPs, he'd be set. <laughs> just finds a clumsy net immediately after. This is so perfect. I think now Yules is still really good, uh, but uh, yeah. Bumsy Net's great. And Razor's farming very quickly right now. He loves this, but TA is our top net worth. I think he has to get rid of the brooch. And then Razor? Give, yeah, like for the net. I think the net's too good. Like the mana regen I, on it is really good for him as well as the stats, but it's mainly just that I think he gets rid of the Wraith Band. I think the Wraith Band, like the, because the brooch is still giving him movement speed of mana. I think that will be a bigger deal than stats, which is like how he has to play right now. Yeah, you All the right. spells are so deadly. A gift from the I mean, either way, I think he just got He just got to take it out of his backpack for one. Here we go. We're going into a fight right now. We have a hex coming out on Disruptor. That's a good first kill, but I Lion, he's leaving. Not really in danger. Here we go. Glimpse back. Lion's in trouble here. What are we gonna do? There's the clumsy net coming out. Kinetic or static storm rather follow it up. Coco's rum goes over top of everybody. Void wants to go in. Here we go. Omni Knight coming out. Chain Frost ran away. No bounces. That blood right hit all five. Yep, Georgia Tech grouping up and pushing together after they take out the supports, but Nightmare looks like they might want to have a bit of a tussle here. Through all three cores up, let's see if they can clean the team up. I don't think Not they can fight to this. retreat. As soon as Static Link goes down, I think they definitely have to go out. They're getting whittled down. Great formation by Georgia Tech, even though they all did get hit by the Blood Rite. Playing together as a team, made sure everyone stayed alive. Yeah, they just, they had a much easier way to take that fight, right? The like Chrono yeah. just... Easily eliminates the first hero, the glimpse to take Lion out of the fight before he can get uh -huh. finger death off. Like, it was a really good initiation there from Georgia Tech. Sure. And Nightmare, you know, they did what they could, but 
There's no, there's no salvaging that fight. Just getting out, they, not dying, is really good on their course. Nightmare lost, but they only lost supports. This is, you know, best case where you're gonna lose two. And yeah, it seemed like their initiation was scuffed. They, they had the clumsy net, and they're like, "Are we going?" I'm not sure because Static Storm got cast before uh, Kinetic Field, which doesn't normally happen. Speaking of combos, there's a Torrent Static Link, Magic Missile, TA swapping is TA so in. Much damage. Razor sitting on 222 Static Link damage, getting pulled back in. We're gonna see Vengeful drop, but let's see if Razor can start cleaning people up. No. This time Nightmare is actually going to back out. Well, okay. they tried, but again, I, it just... That's, that's so weird to me. They went for this without the team there. And yeah, it's... it's Nightmare was very well coordinated in the rotation top to counter-initiate the gank, but now it seems like they're uncoordinated, not sure if they're going or not, and who's starting the fight, and what's going on. Yeah, Bloodseeker had just kind of like moved all the way bottom to, to try and farm, and yeah. then his team tries to, you know, take a fight mid. Exactly. There, it, yeah, it seems uh, I'm in the last two engagement, George Attack is playing like a team and it's working out for them, very obviously. 20 minute runes though, and double outpost. So they split the outpost, but I mean, right now, Nightmare is positioned to get all four of these bounty runes. Yes, sir. Check out, uh, speaking of bounty and net worth, Ricky, check out that TA sitting on top above three players on Nightmare. Yeah, I, I, I saw in the middle of the fight she got her four staff delivered. I thought she was going to rush Blink, but four staff this game is pretty good because of the Kunkka. And um, uh, Static Link, too. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those items where ideally you're like, oh yeah, go Blink, Deso, or Deso, Blink. Yeah. But four staff this game makes a lot more sense. I like it. Although I do, it does seem like it's going to be one of those TA games where she might have to put everyone on her back, and that's what that's kind of what TA does. Yeah, you always have you always have Omni right to keep you alive, yep. and Void late yep. game is no joke. So he's going to get a glimpse. Sick glimpse play. Yes, we do into the Static Storm. Is there going to be a swap out? Yes, there is. The Chain Frost. Chain Frost comes out bouncing on the support. Oh, the smoke from the Lion. Oh, that Very was so play. smart. Now we have a rupture topside. Immediate TP up from Disruptor. It might not be enough. It is not. He gets dropped. Kunkka keeping the action going, dropping the boat, but it doesn't even crash before Bloodseeker takes a kill on Lich with the Lion Finger. And uh, like that, Nightmare is on top of the Tier 1 tower mid, and I don't think they're going to slow down, Ricky. That was really smart. Vo uh, the Void's showing top, so as long as his Void's not there, they're not worried about Chrono. And that's the real big disruptor to their fight, right? So they see they see Void, then they make the call to go. Mm -hmm. And yeah, exactly, exactly. You, Void can't be... Void is proven with his chronospheres that he is a key element to Georgia Tech's fighting force. And if he's going to show on the other side of the map, you know exactly what Nightmare is going to do. They're going to roll over your team. Yep. Looking at items here, Razor's going for Satanic. I'd like to see a BKB on Bloodseeker. Um, I guess he's going Mjolnir first. So after the Mjolnir, he has the money for the Mjolnir. He definitely needs That's BKB. That's What do you think about that? They're playing well, and he's he's the one that they're making space for. So I'm not, I don't think it's that bad necessarily. He does need to stay up with this TA and Void as far as farm goes. Top lane though, Hook is in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Kunk is getting chased. Time walk on top of him. Here comes Vengeful. What's the play? Great magic missile, slowing down the void. Hey, great static storm, zoning static storm. Very well done, keeping Kunkka in the fight with almost all of his damage. Now, caught in a, <laughs> a kinetic field, it seemed. Lich gets left behind. This is a huge timing for Nightmare now. There's no Chrono Nightmare. online. You could actually go Roche. This is, it's crazy. Yeah, that Chrono got used and it put uh, Nightmare in an advantageous position. This is, this is like 100%. They need, they need to go Roche right now. If, if. Like, they have Venge, they have everything they need. Yeah, they can do whatever they want right now, yeah? Yeah. Well. <laughs> this is exactly happen. what Void did not want to have happen. Use Chronosphere, nothing happens, and now they're on the defensive. Yeah. He didn't die, at least, but yeah, you yeah. Know, Chrono's cooldown is insane. You know, they got nerfed back to back and to back, and then they removed Mjolnir the axe for up. it. So this is uh, this is just all the space that Bloodseeker is getting is getting accelerated because of his extremely aggressive item build. He's farming very fast, by the way. Instead of uh, if you went for a more defensive one, he would be able to farm as quickly. Love it. So he's BKB. Working out. Got it. This is next item. No, he knows he wants he's to go in and play at some in. point. Yeah. I guess I'll come play the game with you guys. <laughs> nice scan there by TA. She just TP's out. She knows that they're rotating. They saw them with the ward they have to the entrance to the jungle. They saw three uh, rotate down, so they just knew they were somewhere, but good scan. Then they kept the outpost. Let's go ahead and take the top, though. Yeah, there we go. 
And it's very obvious that Nightmare is in the jungle right now as the top tower gets hit and no one goes to defend, making the safest place on the map for George's attack also to be the top side. Teams taking over each other's jungle. Yeah, Void gets this tower easy. He's got a BKB after this tower, so that's really nice. Very essential for him as well. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure, yeah. Against well, even then the Ventral can swap out an ally, so Void needs to get a BKB, but it's not going to fix all of his problems. People are still going to get saved from Chronosphere. This is Arcane Rune Razor. This is really oh, nice. bottom Ooh, side what a find by Let's by Let's go. Clumsy net, clumsy net. No. Ooh, wait, is he going to make it out? Okay. No, no. I was watching Lion to see if he'd get the finger of death stack, and he still did barely. Phew. Well, that's a great uh, pickoff for the kill. It's going to lead into a tower. Uh, uh, Void's still sitting top. He is showing on the map, too. So Nightmare, just like last time, no, all in. No Void. Yeah, they can't fight without the Omni Knight. Omni is their, like, kind of, for no, no pun intended, saving grace this game. Um, Very clever. I yeah. like it. <laughs> so he needs to be alive if, if uh, George Tech want to fight them five on five. Even with, yeah. like, Chrono Static Storm and everything, you actually have to be able to mitigate a lot of the damage coming out from Nightmare. For sure. Ricky, what I want to know is how you feel about these neutral items. Orb of Destruct. Ooh, oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> so this game particular telescope is fantastic. That is, I mean, whenever you have a Vengeful Spirit, it's, it's really good. But you have also Razor with a Grove Bow and a Lion. All three of these heroes benefit a lot from cast range and attack range. Yeah. So that's that's telescope sick. is so cool. Telescope is so game changing actually. It's 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 like a huge Oh here we go. Bloodseeker goes right in, drop Ah they got the chain frost! Perfect two-man bounce. Bloodseeker's gonna drop all of Avenge. That is finally what we want to see from Georgia Tech. It's so easy, it just works out and then they move straight to the Kunkka. Wow, dude. The carry bought the BKB and he's just rolling over everybody. It's insane how that works, right? Oh yeah. I mean they and they missed three kills, right? Yeah. They threw everything at killing Bloodseeker mm -hmm. and Venge. And this is Roche now. This is that was the main reason I want wanted Nightmare to do it before. Is if you lose a fight, TA takes Roche super fast. She yeah, found an order. Anyone of destruction. on Georgia Tech good at killing Roshan, Ricky? Uh act, like realistically not that good, but they it's have actually just TA. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really just TA. Um for Georgia yeah, Tech. Like good. they have the Deso Orb of Destruction. But for Nightmare, I didn't realize they actually only have level one wave of terror. So Oh, interesting. Maybe they couldn't have taken Roche. <laughs> Very interesting. Alright. Lion with uh, quickening charm. I really like that. I actually really, really like that. That's so perfect for him because every his four actives. Yeah, all of his abilities coming off cooldown quicker. Well, still farming up, but TA's still taking the lead. That's a big item. Titan Sliver. That's really good. I mean, really good for Void, especially because he has the Omni Knight, so stacking that status resist. He didn't go for the time lock cooldown at 15. He went for the time lock damage. That's pretty oh. normal. I think okay. a lot of people go the time lock damage now. But, yeah. Uh, in this game, now that he has BKB, he's he's pretty tanky. He's very. It's very hard to kill this Void at this point. Okay, and Void's going for the uh, Mjolnir, copying Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker going for the BKB, copying Void. He has it now. It's on Courier. Let's do it. Wow, look, Wraithband actually, look at this. Everyone's valuing Wraithband very highly, even highly, more highly than Broomhandle. Yeah, at this point, you don't really like need that attack range. It's like 12 damage and three armor, and I guess he wants the attack speed. Yeah, yeah the attack speed is going to be your most valuable uh, stat. Ah, wow, crazy. Glimmer Cape Nether Shawl on Lich, that is sick. <laughs> Another yeah, like charm. Actually, there we go. Who's it going to? Got to be Omni. I'm disruptor assuming Lich? disruptor. Lich yeah, it's definitely disruptor. Yeah, Having like shorter cooldown on glimpse as well as kinetic field st static storm is insane. And he's just rushing an Aghanim scepter. Like he's gonna have That's it. That's a game winning item. That's and especially with with um, ten charges on Bloodseeker BKB, it's likely he'll have Aghanims done before Bloodseeker gets down to the five second BKB duration. That's a smoke. Georgia Tech. They found a DE and they smoked. Uh huh. Orange pings coming out, that's Disruptors. Okay, going into their own jungle, looking for the bad boys. No one has any good vision, Ricky. TA has BKB as well. That's huge. TA's DD, TA shows, TA found Razor. They're going in. Okay, immediately. 
gets disarmed. Razor, actually, the glimpse puts him in a better position. Chie really wants to get into this fight, but can't Razor's seem to find in anyone. Razor's a lot of trouble. Or, uh, there sorry, we Boyd. go. Void, Void, but he puts the double alt down. Time walks back, goes right in. They're trying to get the Bloodseeker, and they are going to get the Bloodseeker. Could be the first to drop. And now Nightmare on the back foot. Georgia Tech continuing to push into them. Next, Kunkka will drop two cores down, and at the very back, and Razor gets left behind. I take back Great everything I said. Take Boyd wasn't in Ricky. trouble at all. Apologize too. I, I forget how good status resist is against Bloodseeker. So he was heavenly graced, and rupture lasted in all of like four and a half seconds. So yeah. <laughs> very not very cool. really that effective. Yeah, you, you kind of want more out of an alt. Yeah, and then and then to make it uh, worse for Bloodseeker, Boyd just t left the the Chronosphere Kunkka and just went for Bloodseeker and started beating him in through BKB. Yeah. They just do He's so much damage. not doing anything. Look at this. They go straight up, taking the tower. They still have an Aegis, by the way, Ricky. Yeah, TA has BKB and Aegis. They didn't even use Chain Frost. Like, they have a lot online. No buyback for Razor. This is... Kunkka has bow. Yeah, this should be Kunkka's a tier three. Year. X on the status resistance. King. Boat coming up. Lotus Orb. Boat does not connect. Looking fantastic for Georgia Tech, Ricky. Now, Kunkka, though, up on the front line. She does have Aegis if she needs it. Chain Frost comes out. Chain Frost goes out to the back line. It's not doing too He's much. He's just getting because... bashed. Oh, my God. Now, oh, Bloodseeker's on no. the back line again. Even with the BKB, Ricky, he can't stay in the fight. And once he goes down, look at it. Nightmare just... They're, they're scared. They can't do anything to Georgia Tech. There's just too much physical damage. This it TA doesn't even look like we had a team fight. Georgia Tech's in great shape. Oh no, well, we're gonna see a Lich drop, we're gonna see a Finger come out, Disruptor's down, maybe a bit of a defense, once again, disarm TA. Razor's kind of strong. Um, he is. I guess, yeah, good disengage. They, uh, getting the tier 3 super worth it, you only lose yeah. two supports, you get another BKB and a kill on the Bloodseeker. And this is yeah, all super worth. Kill's huge. Bloodseeker hasn't been able to do anything last two fights, Ricky, he's not feeling no. good. Yeah, I mean, he ran in, killed killed Disruptor and Lich, and then, you know, died. Yeah. The thing is, is Faceless Void that. pops BKB and just and just right clicks on exactly. Faces, on the uh, Bloodseeker. And that's the only thing he has to do. And and Bloodseeker has nothing to deal with it. He's got Mjolnir BKB. It doesn't do anything against Void. Yeah. You might as well have nothing. This is what I was afraid of. You know, with this Lion Venge pick, they don't have a really good save for. For this Bloodseeker, as, a, as opposed yep. to having like Guardian Angel and Purification yep. and all these like great defensive items that like Omni Knight just built two auras and a Lotus Orb, you know? Yep. All he really needs. I, I'll admit, I, I, you even pointed out that Omni Knight's a strong hero, and I was so focused on the laning phase that it just didn't even occur to me how how um, competitive Omni Knight would be as a, uh, like a supporting position three. Yeah. Because I was at the start of the game, I was certain. I'm like, oh man, Venge and like the Lion stuns. Like, there's so much control on Nightmare, but Omni Knight is Omni Knight is like outperforming Lion and Vengeful as like a as like a utility hero. Yeah, I mean, the, your stuns and stuff don't matter. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, right? just like his farm. He's 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 actually like worth two heroes right now. He seems like he's just better than the Vengeful a Lion combo. Like he's less farmed than the Kunkka, but in these fights, you know, doesn't feel like it. Who's putting out more work, right? You have this Ax Kunkka impact. and this this Heaven's Halberd, but at the end of the day, this and Omni keeps his team alive. Yeah. When you when they're not even able to contest, contest Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech is just rolling over them. Like they they just take everything on the map. Yeah, this is looking real bad for Nightmare. They, like just looking at the the net worth of being in this game, like they they got off to a really good start. We're five thousand ahead, but now it's starting to skyrocket in the other direction. And I don't see a point where they necessarily outpace or like can take a five v five engagement against Georgia Tech. And they they have a really hard time split pushing as well because you're going against now an Ax disruptor. You have TA. You have you have Void. All these heroes with great catch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I'm I'm just loving it, man. Georgia Tech, it, it, they're in a great position with just their 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 team composition, and they're also playing as a team. Like every fight, they're playing together. Like they even got hit by uh they even got hit by five man blood right. They're playing together so much, but it still paid off. All right, smoked up from nightmare. They they need here to get go. something here. This is a big yeah, they one. Absolutely initiation. How's it gonna go? We're finding the faces, Floyd, wrapping they all the way vision. around. This has been spotted. Oh no, this is not what we want to have happen. However, a catch on TA. Oh, Great cross here, Ricky. It hits on everybody. 
They hit the Spoid, he's going in, he is chunking the line, dropping him off, TA pops for DKB, now teaming up with Void, chases down another support, Razor has managed to get a ton of damage with Static Link, he is the best chance Nightmare have of getting back into this fight, but we see it again, Georgia Tech, all of their heroes group up and push together, rolling over Nightmare, Kunkka drops, Bloodseeker wants to go in, he can't even get a kill on the support, now he's trying to force out the... Colonel's the faces. He actually gets popped when Lion shows up. This is huge. Razor. If they can get this, 222 TA, damage. There's no BKB. The pressure up. Now we have Razor and we have Bloodseeker. Lion on the back line. We found the TA. We're gonna take her out now. What oh. amazing four staff, but Lion. Lion. Stays. Does he have it? His Lion. Oh, we <laughs> got him. What a game. Fourth great play from Nightmare. Four heroes alive at the moment. That uh. That fight actually came down to Kunkka Ags. I know we were we were kind of talking, you know, trash on the Kunkka Ags. They yeah. get a four-man chrono, which was huge, but Disruptor could not follow it up with his ultimate. He got hit by two torrents back to back, <laughs> sent into the air, and then his ult comes out and misses everyone. And at that point, you have Bloodseeker, uh, who's able to just run down the back line. You have Razor, who just stayed on top of the Omni Knight for the entirety of that fight, made sure face was void and, and then couldn't really shut them down. Yeah, it was a you know, great fight. Great Razor got it. That Static Storm was just amazing. Like that I mean, the Razor was battle ready. Yeah, Static Link. Static Link yeah. was just amazing. Razor turned around over 200 damage and full health. He just he just got exactly what he wanted. Yeah, I mean, his team got messed up, but just look at them while I see all your damage. This is no now, joke. You can't tank fit. this. <laughs> like, there's a good Blood Seeker just, just died. dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Underestimating the Disruptor. What did this set up here? Well, the T3 goes down. Here we go. Void going in. They have a Razor. However, Razor has a lot of support around him. Torrent Storm coming out. Great chain for us. Right on top of the Razor and Kunkka, but they don't even care. In fact, they actually drop. They're dealing they with They need this Omni kill really unfazed. badly. Yeah, this Omni kill is huge. Yeah, you take the frog there. Definitely take the stun. Just keep your team on top of the Omni Knight. They can't seem to drop him. Finally, they managed to get him. Lion ground, wants more Ricky teleports on the high ground. And there's the finally the clumsy neck oh, going in. The buyback coming out here. TA Lion, I think you're dead, my friend. Yeah. But I love the effort. That. Okay, I'm blaming I'm blaming Venge for that one. She could have just swapped the Bloodseeker out. Yeah. And she, I guess they just thought he wouldn't die, but this is an mm -hmm. Ags Disruptor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's Static Storm is huge and it does mm -hmm. a lot Especially of damage. Yeah. That's what I noticed a lot is I think I, my assumption is that people forget that the damage scales up with Static Storm. The very end of Static Storm is the highest damage. Yeah. The like damage misleading. starts up off weak, but increases in power over the duration. Mm -hmm. And maximum DPS is 350, by the way. Yeah. I mean, we saw Insane. it. Bloodseeker's health plummeted yep. at the end there. Yep. Okay, both teams are very dangerous. Less than 1k net worth lead. It's all going to come down to the play. Roshan's back up. Are they trying to get a ward off? They have vision. They're going to swap them. Ooh, yeah, swap there it is. them in. This is good for Central Florida. That's that telescope coming in. Do you see the range on that static link? <laughs> that was nuts. <laughs> That's so good. It's so good. Chrono. Here we go. They got for the blood you gotta swap. Oh, There's no swap they charges. Okay. No. Vengeful caught out by the Lich. Great play by the Lich, understanding who he needs to control. A disarmed TA. We've seen this a hundred times. We're about to see it two more times. Actually going for the body block. Now she's finally ready to start putting some damage on Kunkka. What's she gonna do? Goes to the high ground first. Then they take him out with the team. Now we want more. We want more. We have a um what is it even called, man? The Thunderstrike. Keep in vision. There's the fear. Let's go. Georgia Tech rolling over Nightmare. Three heroes, no buyback, and Roche is up. This seems like a like a wet dream for Georgia Tech. Yes, sir. You definitely just get this last creep wave uh, mid. Like, TA room. cuts this and then goes straight to Roche. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Maybe a, there's they try and force high they, they might try and force the buybacks, but they don't have them, so it's kind of funny. What buybacks? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to take buildings. Look at this right through Jesus. backdoor protection. Or of a destruction. <laughs> yep. Pretty good. Ooh, another disarm. I guess, yeah, they can do this and then go Roche. They go, th go throw? No, they want more. I mean, go for it. If you can break through, now they don't even have backdoor protection anymore. They're going to melt these buildings. Wow. Yeah, not having buyback. I mean, Kunkas was still on cooldown, I believe. Yeah, do all three of them three? are still on cooldown. It's going to be 3v5. Do you go for three or do you go for Roche? Now you go Roche. 
Now you go, Roche. Yeah, this was, they're just much smarter than I, but... <laughs> Yeah, that was a fantastic play. Two sets of racks. A very easy Roche Radiant attempt here coming up. Kunkka's still dead for 30, and they can take it in that 30-second window for Kunkka's sure. the hero they need for Roche, yeah. Hey, look at that. And they even get a D ward going right on in. This doesn't want to be here for the Carnage. TA, pump him. Oh, yeah. Kunkka will not be here in time. Great scouting static storm, too. Sends Bloodseeker all the way back. Yeah, there it is. Gives away the ward. He gave Aegis to the Void this time, and put Cheese on uh, Templar Assassin. Very interesting. I guess they are more worried about Void dying. He is definitely more likely to. Yeah, either way, they both got an item out of it. They can probably, you know, play around it. The Lion well, has his Ags. I'm trying to see, like, what are some big new items that came out? We have Ags, Lion... TA or Bloodseeker almost has a butterfly. Uh, I like um, butterfly for Bloodseeker. I think that would have even been better than uh, Mjolnir. MKB on Faces Void. I did not see that. And AC. He wants to do some damage on the Templar wow. Assassin. Wow. She's got a Lincoln's queued up as well, which. Arms for the dead. Do you, I don't know if Lincoln's is. It seems like a little bit funky, but. It's, it's like a nice defensive item, but at the same time, like, I don't think it will save you in this game. I think it's because uh, Omni Knight is focusing on the Void, so it's like, let's TA, like, kind of make sure that Omni Knight doesn't have to worry about her. Okay, they're all smoked up in the mid lane here on Nightmare. Bloodseeker clearing out the waves. Bloodseeker baiting it. Let's see. Jump him. Magic Lamp. Give that bad boy on over to Disruptor. Hey, that's a fun one. Super good item. They got a flicker, huh? A very interesting item. I think that's, that's one a, of the that ones. one is. Yeah, it's like yeah, with with how cool and how strong the items are, flickers one where it's like yeah, it could be cool and strong, but maybe it could. They suck just too. gave it to Bloodseeker. They're like, yeah, dude, here, have thirty movement speed and blink around occasionally. Yeah. I think it's fine, honestly. <laughs> Why not? If he's about to get chrono, you can just press it and hope he gets out of the way. Like yeah, it's kind of funny. Yep. Hey, Whitless shake go. That's a bad item this game. <laughs> Actually, you could put it on Kunkka and make him like unkillable, but he kind of needs the mana, right? At like, uh, yeah, he has ten. Yeah, he needs the mana. Needs oh, that bad boy is going on Disruptor. Spell Prism. 20% cooldown reduction, out. and he has a uh, Quickening Charm. So good for Disruptor. Alright. These 40 minute items are going to be a big deal here in Sick of Look. Yep. Faceless Void playing very aggressive with these time walks. He has Aegis, right? So he can. Where's that Quickening Charm? Where'd it go? Oh, they gave it to Omni instead. That's fine. Yeah. I, I would have. Yeah. I was expecting them to do Quickening Charm on Omni and then the other one on Disruptor, but I 12 all stats is pretty nuts for an Omni too. Yeah, I think that's fine. Split it up. Quickening Charm might actually be like the best tier four item. It's so good. It's, yeah, everybody wants it. Razor bottom lane. Chrono. Oh boy, but he's a little bit tanky. I don't think he's gonna be tanky enough though. Yeah. Yeah. He's going uh, down. Really well played there. It's there's okay. there's no save. Like this is what we talked about. You yeah. can't be that far out of the base uh, at this yeah. point in the game because if you get chronoed, you're in a lot of trouble. He does have buyback at least. If you just take a look at these. I I, I, yeah, I want to I want to see with that, Ricky. You can't be that far to the base. I I praise Georgia Tech's positioning, their formation, their how they're playing as a team a lot, and you know Nightmare just did the exact opposite. They pretty much had a like a, such an awful formation that Razor got caught out, and now they're getting punished by having their last T3 be pressured. That is really separating Georgia Tech from Nightmare in my mind. But right now we still have one barracks separating Nightmare from uh, losing this game, and we're gonna buy back to defend it. But that's the Lincolns. She just didn't get X'd as a result. So she put that in her inventory as opposed to the boots as her just like treads, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, they gave the Shaco to Lion. I think that, that makes much more sense. The problem is he can only cast like three spells now because his ult is 625 mana. All ones will break. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I just don't like it on Lion, especially if they're going to give Lion like. I think quickening gem now doesn't makes less sense. I guess like 
Uh, 17 I don't like second it. I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I guess if he gets a decent mana drain off in the fight, he'll recover a lot of his mana. Yeah, he, he really relies on it. Yeah, I just think, like, Lion wants to just keep all those spells on cooldown constantly. Oh, he went the mana drain targets, too. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, okay, so he yeah. can triple mana drain for 120 mana a second. He'll be fine. Yeah. A gift from the Tempest of Battle. I just thought to myself, I was like, what if you want the mana drain attack? Ooh. That is a great item for Omni. That's if they can put on him. Or they'll just give it to Lich. That makes sense. Yeah, give him a, give yeah. him a little health and BKB. It's like on any of the supports or the like the general supporting heroes, it's fantastic. I love that item. Just that, just having like, honestly, just having the BKB button for the short duration is is, is potentially so huge. So Aegis just got reclaimed. So Faces Void will probably end up buying out his Satanic here fairly soon. I don't think he needs to save for buyback. I think they're in a pretty good position. He at least buys the Reaver. Okay. Has money for buyback still. Here we go, George Attack. Here we go, George Attack. Let's see. TA go in, finish that tower. Anka's going to try and cut the Creep Wave up. Oh, Creep Wave doesn't even make it up the hill. TA put some damage out, force a reaction. Here we go, a glimpse. Kunkka actually gets caught on the back, on the back like Fantastic Chronosphere. We're gonna see Kunkka doesn't actually get taken out, but mine will be the first to fall. Vengeful, where are you? Save somebody's life. No, Vengeful needs to be saved. Just kidding, it looks like George Tech needs to be saved. The They've unleashed Bloodseeker on him, and he can't be stopped. Taking out Omni, taking out Faces Void, and he's still on the first suit. Great kinetic, or static, uh, yeah, kinetic field here. We're gonna see TA teleport out. Wow. Fantastic kinetic field, saving uh, Nightmare from losing even more. Uh, or so from getting another kill. That Crone nice. on the back line, he goes in and, and tries to cut off Lion, which is nice, but at the same time, they extended so far into the base without taking out any of the cores of Nightmare, and as soon as those BKBs wore off, they got hit by the Blood Rite, Void and Omni got hit by the Blood Rite, and those, how, like, how do you keep those two heroes alive at that point? Yeah, it's... It... <laughs> I, I this is the blood secret that I've been waiting to see for a long time because I feel like I've been seeing the blood secret just kind of dying and struggling but that was the blood seeker who's just taking over a fight and unleashing chaos yeah he did a lot of work in that fight and again we see that razor just like props BKB runs down the back line timeless relic give that to lion oh my gosh yes look yes, at this yes, spell yes. damage baby Immediately. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Lion is so happy about this. Oh, yeah. Debuff duration, spell damage. That is a great item for them this game. Ultimate, how much does he have? Seven stacks. That's pretty good. Yep. <laughs> yep. Let's see. He's got pretty much a 1,200 damage. 1,100 damage button to press here. So buyback's available for pretty much everyone on Georgia Tech. So going high ground here is real risky. Because mm -hmm. Razor use Razor has used his buyback recently. Radiance top shrine. Right when he got caught bottom and they were defending the racks originally, he had to buy back. Oh, there's the shrine. They are smoked up on Georgia Tech. They have to know, right? Glimpse. Ooh, he pops BKB. coming out. Pops BKB. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, you have to, right? They counter smoke too, which is interesting. Just to get away. Okay. Yeah, I guess if your BKB is at five seconds, why not? Oh wait, they put the timeless relic back on Kunkka. Weird. So I guess he just really wants a ghost scepter on the lion in case you know he goes for the chrono. What you know isn't bad. It's stats as well, only five. But if he can get the uh, ghost scepter off, he just doesn't die. Yeah. Yeah, I, think, I guess. Yeah. I mean, cause lion's definitely the most fun to be holding that item. Really weird. I. I don't know. The spell damage isn't, like, like great for the Kunkka. I guess the stun duration, like, might be bet, like, might be okay because of Ghost Ship and the Ag's Torrents, but yeah, just seems weird to me. Yeah, Lion is, Lion is, it's so easy to get value out of it on Lion. Well, I think we're waiting for Roshan. Oh, 10 seconds. And we'll see. Could spawn in 10 seconds. Faceless Void going for a Satanic of his own. 
absolutely necessary at this point. Omni going for an Ag's Blessing. So if they get Ag and Scepter from Roche, do you give it to the Lich or do you let Omni have it so he can build something else? And uh, Roche respawned almost immediately. It's a refresher, but yeah. something else is going on here. Yeah, we got a Chronosphere coming out. A big Chronosphere coming out on four heroes. Fantastic. Lion manages to stay alive. Void staying in. Here we go. Hunky ship coming out. Void, I don't think he's in trouble, but he is disarmed. They're trying to put some pressure on him. Razor taking all the damage from the enemy team, but now he's forced to be on the back line. So far, it's only Lion who's fallen. Bloodseeker looking for an opening to get back into this fight, but... No, on the top side, here we go. Razor finally catching TA out, but he doesn't do enough damage. TA is going to stay on Razor. Razor on the very top of the fight. Looks like he's going to drop. There's the swamp. Ah! Finally, he, there's he's going no to the way. There's no way. There's no way, Ricky. Okay, well, back over by the Roche pit. We have the Flicker. The oh my gosh. Bloodseeker <laughs> actually just lived because of Flicker. Amazing. They didn't scout Roche, but I mean, do you need to? Razor, no buyback. It's yep. up in a minute technically, but this is more than enough time to take this last game, of, this last lane of Rax, get Megas. This is this is looking like Georgia Tech might be able to close out the game. Yeah, Georgia uh, TA goes straight in. Love that. Well, you know, Razor's a hero where, where it makes sense to go for the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, another great flicker. Wow, he's making great use of this uh, item. This item is bonkers, <laughs> but not gonna last well, long enough. Go for the final Rax. Looks like it's gonna drop. Okay. A defensive Mega Crease with three heroes. It's looking gloomy for Nightmare, but we may see an attempt oh, coming out. Oh, the No, not gonna happen. Faceless Void does get caught. He's forced to pop BKB. Same BKB comes out from Bloodseeker. Faceless Void goes in. Bloodseeker turns around. Wants to try and get a kill on the Faceless. You get swapped back with the Rupture. Great play. Now the Chain Frost has been lent loose. Sorry, Vengeful Spirit. Ooh, taken out. Yeah, that's gotta get be it right there. Now. TA still alive, four heroes dead. Your tier fours are gonna drop. So, yeah, this has been Ricky. a really good first game. Fantastic game. Now, what the final decision there for me was when Razor again wanted to one v one the TA. Razor is a great hero to to grab like a one v one with another core. That's essentially how his kit works. But he severely underestimated the damage output of TA, and when he turned and fought her, he learned quickly but not quick enough that he was going to lose that fight and i believe that's what ended up costing um costing central Florida the game when they lost the razor and you know they just pushed right into the base there's nothing they could do overall though like you said that was fantastic uh play from both teams yeah very i mean very 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 well played i like i said i think georgia tech's lineup at at the end of the day going late game is so much easier for them and we see right they get that one chrono they get the dieback on the lion uh disruptor is able to just have so much impact with just an agonim scepter and of course omni knight so just enabling these cores to uh you know get one or two kills in this fight and then it just is that much easier but exactly that's the story of the game enabling the cores and we discussed omni knight did such a good job i again i stand by it lion and vengeful played a great game but omni knight by himself enabled his team more than both the supports on nightmare yeah i don't right. think we're going to see omni knight in game two ricky yeah i mean I, in general i think that we're going to be seeing some very different drafts for sure yes definitely all right ricky well shall we cut to a quick break before we get into the next match i like that idea we'll be back in just a few minutes see you guys soon
Starting off the hour, you just heard Stonebank. Then before that, we had Tokyo Machine. And of course, starting off the show, we had Tony Romero. Talk to us on socials and let us know where you are listening from and what tracks you are enjoying. Coming up right now is Julian Kalor, who just got off of an amazing year with tracks like You Might Get Lost, Galactic Trumpet, Dream Odyssey, his No Fear Anymore EP, and this track coming in right now, Adventures. So enjoy, and you heard it here on Monster Cats Call of the Wild.
Hello everyone, and we are back. Hope you guys enjoyed that small little break. You know what wasn't I small did. though, Carlo? What wasn't small, Ricky? The length of that game. That was a long <laughs> game. That was a great game though. That was fantastic. You know what, Ricky? I didn't think that game felt that long, and I think that might have to do because of the fact that time flies when I'm with you. That's fair. That's fair. I can. That's I all you're gonna give that. me. That's yeah. all you're gonna give me for that setup. I I don't know what to say about that. I I, I have no response. I'm, like, you're speechless. Is yeah. what you're saying? Okay, I can't thank you. say thank, anything better than that. Thank you. Hold the applause, everybody. So, <laughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and be jumping into game number two here in just a moment. Um, now, what do you think? Are we gonna see Georgia two zero? I think it. From what I saw that game, this definitely could go to game three. We were discussing it before we saw the teams play. I mean, the game, it was a long game. These teams are relatively even matched. It was just some strong plays and some mistakes that uh, decided it. And we could see that happen again in game two, however, favoring Nightmare. So what do you think? 2-0 or 2-1? It, it could go either or. I think, the, I think these teams it's are very evenly matched. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest issue was the draft for uh, UCF, yes. you know, Nightmare. They, they played really well. They played their draft really well. The biggest issue is that they did not have ways to deal with uh, this late game void TA Omni, right? These heroes that just are so difficult to kill. And for sure. we'll see them probably adjust, uh, yeah. you know, here in the draft phase. We're going to real soon. <laughs> yeah, which we are finally underway. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at game number two here between UCF and Georgia Tech. Yeah, let's get into the game. Dia team ban. All righty, all righty. Now, regarding uh, Nightmare's draft last game, I specifically, I kind of feel like they just, they, they picked five heroes, but they didn't draft a team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of setup for this, uh, like, Bloodseeker. I think the, the, the biggest weakness of their draft is this offlane Kunkka. Um, he played yes. well. He did he really well in lane. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is it just doesn't feel like it has as much impact. Okay, yeah, comparative to the Omni Knight, no way. Omni Knight was the star of the show for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, uh, Omni Knight in this game. Yes, no, maybe so? Maybe. Nightmare Half. I want to see, see it, but I don't think we should <laughs> see it. Yeah, At least Night if we do see it, it definitely should be for Nightmare. Yeah, Nightmare have first pick, so they may, they may opt to take it, or they may have uh, a way that they know of dealing with it. They already did remove the Disruptor, which I really do like. A hero that did cause them a lot of troubles. The glimpses that game completely changed the fights. Mm -hmm. That's what Glimpse does. Like, I've described Glimpse, and I still kind of like this, as like the best spell in the game that does nothing. It doesn't do any damage. It doesn't stun anybody. Like it, it doesn't really. It just, it just moves one person, and it's so good, like game winning. Yeah, what a spell. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you also, there's a lot of times when you glimpse and it back. helps the enemy team or does nothing and you feel like, whoa. uh, okay. what's, whoa, the, the AA, AA man, maybe they're just planning on going, something's like, fishy, something's cheesy. I mean, they may just open right away with Omni Knight with the AA man, but I mean, that leaves like several really good heroes still in the pool. Vengeful Spirit, Abaddon. Phantom Lancer, like all these heroes that are, are very strong, would still be available. Exactly. So, uh, the, you know, second pick team. Wait a second. Yeah, I never mind. Yeah, Georgia Tech would just be able to lock two right away. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, for, I, for a second I thought uh, Nightmare was doing that to do some good second pick, but then I, I realized the mistake there. Nightmare's first picking. Okay, Georgia Tech stumped, though, by this. Hmm, what's going Figure on? Yeah, which good hero you want to give Nightmare, right? <laughs> The A band kind of telegraphs a lot, right? And the yeah. PL still. I think that's the correct pick. Or the correct band. Probably. Yeah. The reason being I is like if Nightmare takes the Omni, you can respond and pick yourself the Abaddon. Or if they take, you know, Ventral Spirit for some reason, then you can take Omni Abaddon, and then yes. Georgia Tech is just in real good shape at that point. Yeah. Uh, I I would be I would I would like to see some Abaddon. Whoa! Hey, that's a hero that I'm always down to see, and I never expect. How do you feel, Ricky? 
I mean, Chen's a good hero. He got nerfed a lot with the change to the creep auras, but he's still good. Like when he gets like Guardian Greaves and Hand of God, right? He's just, there's a lot of healing. He keeps people alive, Ten similar to what Omni Knight does, but from the support position. So Five, seven, this makes sense eight. as to why we see the AA ban here. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you let Georgia Tech now have potentially the same opener that they had last game. Yes, and... Yeah, they're going to do it. Uh, they take the Venge I, now, I, too. You either go, you either go a bad or... Yeah, you either go a bad or Venge here, I'm pretty sure. What do they do, man? It's all it's open. I love it, man. I'm excited to see this Omni again. Now that I know, I, I, I didn't even feel like I underestimated the Omni, but I somehow still managed to underestimate the Omni. He's, he, he did a lot. Remaining. You called it, too. Yeah, the hero's insane. Fantastic, huge impact, Five all stages of the game. Remaining. Yeah, other than Doom, there's no other hero from the offlane role that does as much, right? Like, Doom is one of those heroes that you can play him in 4 or 5, but... I'm sorry, 3 or 4. Mm -hmm. But he's so difficult to shut down from farming or just in the yeah. laning stage. And then on top yeah. of it, he's so good at every stage of the game. There's not any point yeah. in the game where those heroes are bad. Ooh, oh, CM. interesting. CM, okay, not what I expected. She is good and against she's Chen. Been, she's been getting nerfed. Zeus. Okay, three or... Now, you can't be running that as a four because you're running Chen. Unless you want to run Chen five. So, we're either looking at support Zeus? I, I mean, Zeus. I would expect it to be a support Zeus. There's no way you pick a core Zeus this early in the draft. And now, can I claim that Chen is not a stunning hero and say there's no stuns on the supports, even though Chen <laughs> can tame a stun? Because, like, that's my concern right away, like... Is either you revealed your mid, you revealed a core, a, ve a very squishy core um, early on, or you revealed that you have no control, which was an issue that both teams struggled with a little bit last time. Uh, but now I'm concerned, man. I want some control in this game. I mean, they ban anti-mage, which makes me think that they're planning on running this as a core. You can't play Zeus yeah. if TA is still in the pool at all. You can't play Zeus again into TA. You just lose, you just like... It's impossible. She Do just you think farms. Georgia Tech has a TA player, Ricky? Yeah, for the last game, maybe. The other <laughs> thing is you also have Storm Spirit, which is fantastic against Zeus, one of the best counters in the game. Storm and then, Spirit loves CM, too. Yeah. And loves Omni Knight, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they ban the Storm. So this is going to be... I, this has to be a core Zeus. There's literally oh, no, uh, there's no way. They're baiting with bans, dude. That's the only way. They're baiting with bans. Just next level metagaming someone? Super, super duper. And then Georgia Tech's going to pick the TA, and Nightmare's going to pick the Huskar. That's why they banned <laughs> the AA. <gasps> oh my god, you might actually be right. Universe brain. <laughs> <laughs> Five head galaxy brain coming in here. Let's go. Five seconds remaining. This is insane. Honestly, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see right? this as just a right? giant bait. Yeah, the <laughs> No stun, Zeus. First phase, everything's open. They could pick Lycan, honestly, for the safe lane on Georgia Tech. I haven't it's seen a Lycan. Yeah, it's a safer hero that still counters Zeus in case it's core. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things where if they decide to go for the Huskar, it's pretty sick against Huskar. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's see, is Georgia Tech, are they in on the meme here? The ultimate bait they just fell for? Radiant team pick. Oh, okay. That's spicy. Clockwork loves to play with a C with a CM too. Mm -hmm. Dire team pick. Necrophos. Eh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't really care. It's like it. He's not a save for Clockwork, right? Like he kind of is. He's not really. Eh. Necro ah. is getting better. Like I think this neck this hero is in a really good spot, but he's one of those things that like he kind of needs a favorable lane. Seconds, really yeah, mean. yeah. If and... you want an impact from him on the game, he's gonna he, exactly. He needs Five he needs to be getting money. Really he's not gonna do it just with spells alone. Yeah, Necro is very item dependent and level dependent. So and positioning dependent, playing against uh, a lot of control already. The Aghanim Scepter has been pretty funny. Against multiple strength heroes that, you know, don't have a lot of burst damage, you just go Ags on Necro and you can't die. It's really funny. <laughs> we might see it this game. I mean, he's going to be getting kept alive. He has Chen heal. That's going to be a really good combination with Ghost Shroud. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, is there any chance that Clockwork could be a taxi for Lifestealer? 
Or Life Steel? Um, is Life Steel even played as a one anymore? Yeah. What does he, he do? What happened? <laughs> yeah, he's a one. They gave him 200 attack speed. What do you mean? He's just really good now. <laughs> Dota has seen some wild days recently. Yeah, it really has. I mean, they just take away like, his like percentage based damage and then just give him 200 attack speed. And they're like, yeah, this is yeah. fine. <laughs> it's the same thing. No yeah. one will notice. I played Doom recently in the offlane into a, into a life stealer and. Oh, fun. Went AC. Radiant. I went Vlad's AC, Phase Boots, Shiva's Craggy Coat. And I had like 60 armor. And then I devoured the, the Granite Golem and had 6,000 uh -huh. health. Ooh. And so I, it sounds like you had a fun game. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't die. Oh, tiny. So tiny can deal with the drow, but Omni Knight can deal with the tiny burst. I mean, that's a four uh, draw. Or I'm sorry, the four draw. That's a four tiny for sure. Safe lane draw, which is really strong. And I just like I love Omni Knight, man. After seeing him last game, it's like, what are you gonna do? I just don't like Omni Knight in my mind right now is just like this insane hero. After seeing how how effective he was on Georgia Tech's lineup, it's like I don't feel Five like Necrophos or Tiny are enough on their own, or even together they're even going to be enough to deal with like how good Omni Knight is. He he doesn't even have to play well. He just presses his buttons. Yeah, just it just hits all of his buttons, and I feel like he counters them. Tiny is in kind of a weird spot, I think. Um, you can't play him as an offlane anymore. I think in the last patch we saw him, we saw a lot of like core tiny. Or when when this patch first came out, we saw a lot of core tiny. Yeah. As things have adjusted with like the sub mini sub patches, you you can't play him in the three position at all because he. If you play him as a core, you have to go like that mask of madness, like Sanjin Yasha, like right clicky echo like build. Yep. And you can't do that in the three position anymore. You need to be able to support your team. Yes. So it, Tiny also kind of feels like he doesn't do anything unique. Like I always remember Tiny as like he's, you know, what was it 22 second cooldown on Avalanche? Every 22 seconds, he can just blow someone up. It's like I feel like there's heroes that can do that, blow someone up more reliably and not countered by BKB and also can turn their farm into more effective items than Tiny turns his farm into. I feel like he's got like, the, he needs like, uh, like he's kind of like old Dragon Knight. Where he's like, this was a cool hero two years ago, but they need to do something new with him. I really, I think he's in a really good spot in general. Um, just because he's he's still like this Avatos, like blink, like hero. And I, and Toss is such a fun mechanic. It is. Magnus. Toss can make huge plays. So that's safe lane so mag off moving, Necro. Moving enemies. Or maybe it's safe lane. Is that Necro. position one? tiny that's no way it has powers. to be four tiny it has to be four tiny you can't play it's it's either one position mag or necro i'm expecting it to be one mag off lane necro mid zeus this is wild because you can't play easy. magnus in a drow like you just lose that lane so it's definitely safe lane mag against omni knight five seconds remaining and then it's a four position tiny with a necrophos which honestly isn't bad if you can get a good toss back Oh, I was thinking OD. Oh, yeah. Like, Astral just ruins <laughs> Nightmare. Like, if you don't go on OD, you go on OD, Omni saves him. You don't go on OD, OD can save the person. I love George's lineup. I mean, OD Omni is just like a classic, like, combo that just seems to always win. Yeah. I will it's, say, I, I do like Nightmare's draft. The problem is Necrophos' game just got a million times harder. I, Aunt Rick and come say, I don't like Nightmare's draft. I just, I feel the same way as I did last time. I feel like they picked five heroes. They didn't draft the team. Like, and, like, like obviously, you can see some synergy, but it's like, when, then I look at Georgia Tech Esports, and I'm like, this is a, like a serious team here. Yeah. And I look at Nightmare, and I'm like, I just, I feel like there's just a bunch of good heroes, and they're just going to hope it works out for them. Does Clockwork... A lot of this, I think, comes down is going to come down to Clockwork. If he can find a couple like really good kills in this lane stage, uh -huh. uh, Georgia Tech will snowball this game. There, there'll, there'll be no stopping them. The, the thing that Nightmare do, do have this game that they didn't have before is a ton of sustain. They have the Necrophos, uh -huh. they have the Chen, um, and yeah. they have BKB piercing stuns, which we'll see if it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Zeus just does so much damage to you. Can never you can never write yeah. off Zeus's damage. Yeah, and well, Clockwork early on his laning, he's gonna have a pretty bad lane. Like, who can he kill? He can kill like he he, he finds tiny, but then just gets tossed away. So it doesn't exactly. really matter. Yeah, it's Zeus. Zeus is his only like real target, and that's gonna be like he'll he'll trade a lot of damage and going for him.
OD can honestly get a good astral into into a battery assault and just yeah. run him down, but yeah, that's true. It'll be really easy to gank that lane. Problem is, is can Clockwork rotate? Because I think the Chen lane is going to be really hard to deal with because he'll just start Blightstone and just click you. Yeah, I think that's hilarious <laughs> when Chen does that. Yeah, I mean, why not? Ooh, look, right? He has a doggy. Ooh, puppers. <laughs> All right, we've made it. Finally, game two, potentially the last game of the series if Georgia Tech takes this. And we'll see what they can do here. Prepare for battle. Yeah, so, so got are they going to do the lanes? Row? Any odd thing here? It is one position, Tiny. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and uh, we got double headdress going on uh, Nightmare. So it is the... I don't know if the Zeus or the Necro is the support. Uh... Matt Joe last game... What did he play? He played support, I feel like, didn't he? I mean, I I just say Zeus built uh, Observer Ward Ring of Basilius. It's got to be Zeus support, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember what Fat Joe played last game. And then oh. we got the three man commitment bottom from Georgia Tech. Very easy to get a kill with uh, Clockwork, especially teamed up with a Crystal Maiden. I love this ward. This is my favorite ward. They just placed bottom lane. Zeus has to be the support. No way. Because in I this lane, he just needs to be bolt spamming the the drow. So it has to be Necro 3. Like, Necro without farm is terrible. So it's Necro 3 for sure, Zeus 4. I'm sticking to my... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm it. stamping it, saying that that's the official positioning there. If it's anything else, Nightmare's wrong. How do you feel about OD Mag? I feel like OD is just going to have a great time. Yeah, they will just keep astraling Mag. Mag will find farm, though. And that's one of the things with, like, new Magnus is... He has so much damage with Empower 1 that he just like will still CS and he will stack camps and then he will farm the camps. Yeah. And he'll be fine. CM though, rotating to the mid lane. So this is, if she finds his courier, it's actually huge. Do you have enough damage though? <laughs> yeah, she does. She'll get okay, she'll no, get she's going back. Sure. Uh, okay, I like her playing triple uh, bottom though. They just need to catch somebody. Wait, is Divine Favor level? Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. That's the uh, the, the AOE yeah. regen. It's just so good. You just start headdressing that. You just give you here. Here we go. Here we go. Region. Anything bottom? No, Clockwork is not a spot for this. Clockwork yeah, still, still hasn't revealed himself. Oh, wait, did he nah, show there? No, he didn't. Uh, yeah, he's not going to be there. Yeah, unfortunate. Hoping Chen would play in that side. Goes right back or goes right up to top. So Clockwork just is going to feed off of the Zeus. Like, Zeus that's can't the, contest him. Plan. Yeah. So then that sets up a 2v1 on Necrophos. Necrophos isn't super scared of Clockwork, but he's still going to take it. Like, Clockwork's fine trading. Here we go. Clockwork found a Zeus. Put some damage on that guy. Not going to be a kill, but Zeus hates this. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do about this. Mm -hmm. God, over 50% of his HP. And Clockwork doesn't really care too much about the bolt spam. He's like, the, the, he pulled that Necrophos out of lane. He's making uh, Zeus use mana regen and health regen. Yeah, he's very fine with that. And it's about to be up again soon. Yeah, he will just continuously run down. Here he goes again. They stack up for it, trying to split it. That multi-shot Great multi-shot. Fantastic. Is Necrophos actually in trouble? He has another heal here. He's going to get it. Here we go. Thank Long God. range. Jake gets first blood. Clockwork safe. Clockwork loses the salve. No, my friend. Wow. Yeah, this is a disaster. That. They do get the salve, but yeah. Clockwork is just going to keep casting the spells on cooldown. He probably just wants to go, like, die if he wants. Full health, full mana, just trade it into them. It's working very well. A courier coming. Yeah, I would I'd go suicide to tier 2 and come back, but... Yeah. He's just going to regen, like, yeah, it looks like. He's making fantastic trades using his regen, or his health and mana, against uh, Nightmare. So Chen is just being a pain in the butt for CM bottom. Yeah. But Tiny CSing pretty well, right? 11 and 3, really good against Omni Knight. You have just way more damage. You have Quelling Blade. You have more range. Overall, pretty good. It's it's not a bad lane to deal with the Omni. I guess that was their initial, you know, the whole reason they drafted in the first place. So like, we know this hero can beat Omni in lane, but why not? What is up with Chen getting a Vool Assassin? Uh, reduces regen. So the the venom oh. reduces regen by thirty five percent. 
Oh, what yeah. the heck? Pretty cool. It was a it was a one thing that was added into this into the patch. And that snuck in there. A lot of people don't know about it. Yeah, what? That's crazy. Yeah. So hitting you know on you with that once means his purification right, is thirty five percent right. less healing. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. taking a lot of damage. Oh here. hey. Okay, you go to back. Yeah, I that I wasn't. Dang, that's actually pretty sick. All right, they're just gonna keep on going back to CSing. Um, neck and neck mid lane. CS wise. Yeah. Uh, Magnus mid doing really well as expected, right? Like. You can't really stop Magnus from farming mid unless you can hard counter him in the lane, and there's not many heroes that can do that. Yeah, he... I guess again, yeah, it's the Empower. It's very good. He puts a lot of damage out. He has high HP. CM really wants to kill this <laughs> this assassin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look at that. No points in Aura. There's a Gosh. DD rune bottom getting picked up by Magnus. Oh, he almost got out. Okay, no, no, never mind. Astral's on cooldown. Yeah. I just fake Ooh, hyped it. Don't chunkin. mind me. Fucking sick. Yeah, I, I foresee I'm not doing as well as the Disruptor did, supporting the Omni Knight. However, level 3, she'll get her aura, and that'll make a big difference yeah. across the map. Let's take a look back at top, right? This is a lane that it started out really bad yeah. for a Nightmare, but honestly, they're, they're, they're staying away from Clockwork. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Necro and Zeus yeah. just are staying together. That's the big deal. When, yeah. when Zeus was kind of running around on his own, mm -hmm. Clockwork just chases him down, and now he can't contest because Necrophos does way too much Oh, here we go. On top of him, though. He get he goes. Yeah, catches just the Zeus. He's hitting the neutral creeps. There we go. Relocates away. Goes for the body block. Well done. Five minutes mark, by the way. We're going to stay in. Great multi-shot, Go Shroud. Yeah, Very that's well done. great cogs, right? There's no real good way for them to... to to soak the damage together if if they're gonna get cogs, so yeah. And Georgia Tech three bounties. Oh my God, this Crystal Maiden <laughs> it just took so much damage to kill that creep. She's not having fun. <laughs> I mean, she had to kill it. That's the thing. That that assassin was causing such an issue. Yeah, it's true. Well, she got her aura now. I think she just wants to go heal. Is her best bet now. Top lane again. Look at Mole. Found Fat Joe. God, this is what we just said exactly not to do. Get the he heal, run the to heal. me. And, and goes back to Drow. Zeus is not having a good time. Worst time in CM, that's for sure. Yeah, that is one of the reasons you don't pick a, a Zeus that early in the draft. Mm -hmm. The Clockwork pick was a great call there. By oh, yeah. Here we go. Clockwork consider. again. Clockwork again, Ricky. He's a bit low, but I don't think there's enough damage from Necrophos here. Gets him in the cogs. There's a Ghost Shroud. Clockwork's just going to sit right here, doing a great job with the uh, battery assault. Yeah, even the Mango ate on Necrophos, but it doesn't matter because all your spells are on cooldown. Great oh, job, man. Bolt. This Drow is Naked boots. loving life right now. She lost her Courier. So Necro like went and dove with the Courier, but didn't die for it. So definitely not worth it. She's going to be getting a lot of solo experience here. Really smart from the, the Clockwork to pull away from the, the wave here. So that Drought can get that solo XP. A lot of supports yeah. in lower tiers will just sit in the lane and just kind of wait, right, for for the next thing to happen. But yeah, really, really smart. Nope. Oh, there we go. That's the Zeus we wanted to see. He gets level two Lightning Bolt, and pops some damage on Jake. Uh, lane's very even, actually. All all of them are pretty much like exactly even. All right, Tiny is now in a lot yes. of trouble. There's yeah. phase boots up on the Omni Knight, so he doesn't really do a lot of damage to him, and Omni can just chase him down. Smoke comes out. CM might be doing something fishy yeah. here. We're gonna bring three dire players top side. Go for Necro. Here we go. Oh, they just found Necro, man. They don't even need CM. Great battery salt right on top of him. Doesn't even have to use cogs yet. CM's here. They're gonna get a double. No, the cogs miss on two. Getting greedy. They know to get Necropos first. Take him out. Is that gonna be a courier kill? No, not gonna be a courier kill. They want the hero kills. They have no they spells left. Necro. Georgia Tech have no spells left, Ricky. They used everything for nothing. They got too greedy. They'll get them. They there still got go. the slows for Necro, I think. Yeah, there. That's all they need. Okay. I was scared they were gonna lose. They went for both, and we're gonna get none. Yeah, the big thing is they're just kind of ignoring Zeus and yeah, trying to focus. To, oh my gosh, he caught him again. Are they ignoring Zeus? They just find him. Yeah. But it's true. Like, what's Zeus gonna do? 
Like if it's it's just it's loaded on the necro. He's the one who's gonna he needs the items. He's gonna do stuff with items. He will do his thing regardless. And Lane, OD apparently used Sanity's Eclipse earlier. I don't know when, but wow, I, at and, some point. And Magnus is staying ahead too. Double damage. CM, they saw her place that ward for sure. I think. Magnus right here, right here, trouble. Magnus. <gasps> no oh, item. There's the slow. Goes out. Mole wants it. Mole might get it. We're going deep they under tower. It. We got CD. This. 100%. Yeah. So clips it, right? Just finish him. Pop him. You can die clockwork. Doesn't even matter. But he can astral he if he needs to. There yeah, he is. Great there play. it is. No, is he in range? Yeah, he's, he's in, in range. range they tower. have to tank it. They have to tank it. Oh, it switched. Yep. And then they had to die anyways. Oh, man. Another I, like, I like the attempt, though. Yeah, it was a good idea. I mean, they get the Magnus and you lose the clockwork. Not, not the end of the world. Radiance middle tower mm -hmm. is under attack. Bacho does get that D ward as they did see it get placed initially. The bottom lane is just two beef boys hitting each other back and forth. Uh, CM's rotating over. They might be able to find yeah. this kill. Yeah, there is a purification if he wants to soul ring. Wants to kill the CM, it looks like. I don't know if that's the right play. Three points, degen aura, phase boots, put a little bit more him. damage on him. I think they got him. Yes, they do. Maybe CM taking the last hit. Great rotations from Bartlett. Fantastic, Georgia Tech. Seven and one. Beautiful play. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah, that's, so far, it just doesn't feel like this Chen and uh, Zeus are really contributing a whole lot in I, this game. I, I completely agree, Ricky. I feel like their presence is like almost unknown. It's just like what Chen was annoying in lane. Zeus was like not even really annoying in lane. Like uh, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm hoping that I can see something out of them soon. Zeus might it looks just like... die top lane right now. Okay, Clockwork. He doesn't have his spells up yet. He's playing around. Here we go. Here we go. This is what he wants. Move. Goes for the mana burn with the cogs. Battery oh salt God, dropping no very low from the down. Clockwork's gonna pop here, but if he can get a oh kill, it's definitely God. worth it. Clockwork's gonna stay alive, dude. Holy cow, Georgia Tech is playing well. He didn't watch his mana. The Necrophos went to went to Death Pulse into Reaper Scythe right onto the Clockwork, yeah. but he didn't have the mana. Yeah. By the time he popped Mango, he's just getting battery assaulted. We can't get the neck. He can't get the ult off. Yeah, that's. Oh man, these these Georgia Tech's playing well, and and Nightmare can't be making these mistakes because they're they're quite far behind. Uh, well, one and nine. It's only a thousand, but uh, Georgia Tech has a foundation to take the lead, and if these mistakes keep being made, well, Georgia Tech's gonna take advantage of that foundation they've set up. Yeah, I mean Omni's now past the tiny and farm. Like he just picks up Mask and Madness on tiny, which is great for farming. But yeah, you're not gonna outpace this uh, Omni Knight. Iron Talon for the team that's about to take over the map. I will say Magnus has to start. Ooh, nice. He gets the D order there. That's good. Uh, Magnus is going to be like a, a big part oh, of Nightmare's top. draft. Have we seen this one before? Have we seen this move before? Clockwork goes in. There's the cogs. There's the battery assault. Not sharing the damage with anyone. Actually, the gust pushing Necrophos out. might die here. Yeah, that's Reaper's not side. good, Ricky. Ooh, the... Ooh, the raindrop. Very well done. Zeus wants it. Zeus is gonna get it. Is Zeus gonna die for it? He just might. One more prom. One more. Yeah. Go for more. Unfortunate gust, Ricky. I think it was either too early or not necessary. Now Drow, Drow is gonna die. Ooh. Oh my god, no. Nothing no big way. Mike chooses. Now Drow has no mana to TP. Tiny has combo. He could have someone TP in a shrine. You know Tiny is screaming right now. Someone TP. There it he is. wants to toss Base back, it. right? Yeah, he wants to toss oh. back. He's going to get the toss. Great gust. I think Draw's going to be fine. They have to toss Zeus in. Toss Zeus in. There it is. Get up the high ground. No, he gets popped. Great job. That was almost really bad for Nightmare. <laughs> almost really bad. It was almost a Nightmare. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Now Omni Knights. Now Omni Knights, though. He's getting left uh, unchecked bottom lane. Someone has to come stop him. Necrophos is two levels below him. I don't know, Ricky. How's this going to go? I mean, Necro won't die to him. That's that's the difference, right? Like, Necro won't die here. Oh, Hand of God used it's to keep the Zeus like alive. Interesting. Person. Clockwork. Clockwork's got his ult, but he's not able to do anything with it. He Unable should die here. They've off. got they've got Mud Golem and Zeus. There's no way he yeah. should be able to get away. Well, he has no TP either. Okay. He has to run up through this tower. That would have been his best bet. He has nowhere to go, man. Where are you going? Ah. Goes to the, the base. High ground. Peace. 
Uh, as much space as he can make. Bottom side, though, we're under tower. Great CM ult. Gonna lead to a kill on Necrophos. And tower pressure here. Yeah, you know, I said he shouldn't die bottom, but, you know, Bartlett <laughs> Standing on top once of again. CM. Yeah, Bartlett once go, again tiny. rotation. Heal, 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 heal! Gets the heal off. Okay. Tiny, that rotation not as fruitful. Uh, OD and Mag Magnus have just been farming. What's what's the point here we're going to see? OD actually went Midas, so he wants to keep farming. Yeah, I don't like the Midas. He, he should have just gone this double null tally right into an Aghanim Scepter and just started. Fought like, right away? I like he should that. just start fighting. Like He he can actually just start fighting with, with the yeah. Omni and just start killing people, making space for the Drow Ranger. They're doing a exactly. lot on the map already, and there's no reason not to just keep pressuring. Giving space I... to this Magnus is an issue. And Chen, you're playing against Chen, and your strategy seems that two of your three cores want to farm. Odie and Drow just want to be hitting creeps right now. Um, Chen's going to take advantage of that and start pressuring towers. I agree with you. I think Drow could be left to to the jungle, and Odie and Omni could team up and put oh some God, real pressure another on. Oh my God! Another courier. Radiant's courier has been killed. Come on, and you have to. He makes it out. Oof. He makes it out. Un unfortunate for Skip. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Another push out top. I think we might see this tower fall. They're oh, wrapping. Here we go. They got comes Zeus. in. Hitting the battery assault. You can get Zeus. He even gets a heal coming out. Are we going to see him die? Yes, we are. Last shot. Just Reaper's sight. He's guy. in trouble. Oh, we have OD. Oh, save him. No. Great save. Coming out. OD making an appearance. Drops the hammer. We're going to see Necrophos pop. Actually dying to the imprisonment. Chen will be up next. Great shot. shot with the oh, hook shot. My Fantastic job. Okay. Totally worth it. Now the t pressure has been reversed, and the top tower top, or the tier one top, is going to be under pressure. I said I want to see OD start fighting, and you know that's a great way to do it. Rotate he, top. He met get us three in kills. the middle. Built a farming item, killed people with it. Ricky. Yeah, at it's least kind he did of that. the best of both worlds. So Tiny and Omni Knight bottom. Uh, we can all imagine who wins this fight. It's definitely not Tiny. <laughs> Poor Tiny man. Tiny just wants to find a CM or a Drow, and I don't think he's going to have an opportunity to find either of them. God, another courier. You've got to be kidding me. No, Bartlett's just in trouble. Oh, bottom side, actually. Yeah, well, let's see what's going on with Bartlett. Great all coming out. Not going to be enough, but it looked good. Ooh, Tiny man's and up, and with the help of Zeus, they get the kill. Okay, global strat. Let's see him. All right. A little life coming out of Nightmare here. Central Florida. For sure. You know. It is a bit of Georgia Tech overextending as well, but True. if they're going to play that way, Nightmare knows how to take advantage of them. Where are they recalling top right now? Tiny. Okay, good. I was like, it needs to be a tower pusher, so it's either going to be Mag or Tiny. Nice. Magnus Maybe. has the Echo Saber going for Blink. Okay. Mm -hmm. Staying on that farm train for now. All very good. They... I'm a little confused by him having the pupil's gift. I think they need to give that to the necro. I can see it. Ooh, damage coming out from Zeus. Yeah, really, really good play there from the Magnus. Just committing. It's going in. Yeah. Top lane, tier one. It's gone. Still gone over. All right. There. Well, that's the, the pressure we wanted to see from this channel a little bit late, but now it's going quite well for them. It's a clumsy net on OD, which is interesting, and he's more than halfway to his Aghanim Scepter. You're going to have in about 1,200 gold. OD Ags is so good. Hey, there's a couple items coming right out. Keen Optic. Hell yeah. The Grove Bow is a little unfortunate for the Radiant. I guess, yeah, like, I, you can, I guess, put Necrophos, it on like, Necrophos. Has... But or maybe like, Zeus? Yeah, it doesn't feel good, like, whoever you put it on. None yeah, of those heroes yeah, are right-clicking, exactly. like, auto-attack heroes. Yeah. Okay, smoke here with Tiny, with Mask of Madness, no blink. What are we going to see? We're also seeing a group up from Georgia Tech in their jungle. They just Tiny's going to lead this charge. Yeah, they just saw the d war, so they okay. got to be careful. Who they want? They want Drow. They're going to get CM. Great silence. Zeus comes out. Clumsy net. Omni Knight's here. Not going to use the spells on CM. Omni Knight going in. He's going to be the tank while Drow does the damage. On the right side of the fight, we actually have Clockwork catching out Necrophos, taking him down. He just soloed Necro. A little advice. Jeez, poor Necro can't get a break. Well, yeah, Georgia Tech groups up, they trade to CM. Clockwork did 1500 damage. I was going to say, they, I think they need to give the Pupil's Gift over to the Necro because he only has 1000 yeah, like health. It. Like, he can't tank the spells from Clockwork. He may have had like had to go bracer this game, to be honest. Deuce is in Oh, here, here we go. Bye-bye. 
Ooh, and on down. the high ground, very nice. Yep. I'll polish my armor in your blood. Could have been sick. Jesus, Clark, right, well, calm down. <laughs> you already said? Yeah, I'll polish my armor in your blood. <laughs> He's wild, man. All those keen folk are wild. Yeah, who knows, man. Clumsy net on Omni. That's pretty good, I think. I mean, Omni would rather, like... I mean, that's what he wants to do with D-Gen or is just hold someone, like, sacrifice his positioning for someone else's positioning. It's like, that's what Clumsy Net does. It has to be on someone else. Okay, oh, put on Clockwork. Oh, wait, no, they, yeah, they, they moved. They kept moving yeah, it around, I guess. Yeah. It's like, why would you... I was like, Omni just isn't going to want to be, like, in the front line in these fights, I don't think. At least not yet. OD's got the Ags. It's on the way. After that tower kill, he's got the money. Big Mike really struggling this game. He has a hood of defiance, but he he's just saving up for this pipe, and he's getting close to it. Gonna have a few hundred gold here. Uh, mid lane, they're pinging the Damn. tiny. Or I'm sorry, the Omni Knight. Omni, I think he's dead. Yes, yeah, he is. Down. Okay. A minute. Jeez, Georgia Georgia Tech is having some costly mistakes. Definitely a good kill for them. They needed to secure it. It's it, they, They're it's struggling so much. Finding the Omni is big, and now it gives them the opportunity here to go mid lane. You don't really want to fight on Georgia Tech Blink, now. blink, blink. Oh. Ooh, long range on OD. Okay. <laughs> this freaking Astral. Jen gets another tower. 120 mana per... Just... Uh, I don't even know how this hero works anymore. Ooh, which one are you looking at? OD. Like he st he gets like stacks towards his ult. Uh, Astral Impris Astral imprisonment uh, charges for Max. Is that what you're saying? No. Uh, how many like stacks towards his ult does he get? Is it just like are the tooltips just like not updated? Am I crazy? Can I not read this? Gain Sanity's Eclipse Charge. How many? That is the question. Someone help me. <laughs> this increases. Now, now I'm reading it. I'm getting all distracted. Like it doesn't say anywhere. Am I? Am I crazy? Well, he has his his charges on his buff bar. Is that what you're looking at? Well, it's like when you when you use spells right on heroes, you get Sanity's yeah. Eclipse Charges, which give you maximum I mana. Okay. And it doesn't tell you, on either of his abilities, how many those are. <laughs> Very nice game. Well, <laughs> you know, you just listen to the noise, you see the great sound effect, and people die, and that's all you gotta know. It's still Insanity in beta. It's is still in eclipsing. Beta. Mm -hmm. Here we go, smoke, smoke up to the high ground, they're about to find everybody. This could be really good for Georgia Tech if they don't get caught out. Oh no, CM. Part looks like I'm out. <laughs> yeah, okay. We got the multi shot. Clockwork's in. Someone's got to start this fight. Gets the supports. Okay. Four stuff has to be used defensively on the shrine, but there's the RP. Can they get it onto the high ground? No, they can't. Great Astral. Magnus has been controlled on the low ground. However, Georgia Tech needs to reposition as Nightmare pursues them. So Nothing they, comes of this fight. Yeah, they already had a Heavenly Grace on the OD, so he breaks out RP so quick and then just Astral's the Magnus, and then there's no follow up. Yeah. If they could have skewered them onto the high ground into an Avatar. huge. Yeah, that could have that could have changed Double the smoke. fight. I yeah. like this. I think Georgia Tech's still ready to go. Yeah, they didn't use anything in that engagement. They're just, ready yeah, to go. Clockwork all two cares. Let's see what we can catch here. Let's see what we can catch here. Something big. Necrophos or Magma Magnus. Let's go. Drow's pop. There's the gust. Clockwork. Okay, we have a slow on Necro. He just gets melted. Can we get more? Clockwork has hook shot in 13. I think they can keep chasing. They really just want to keep vision on the tiny. They, they did get him with the slow. Big range on CM. Okay, no. Oh, Clockwork's rapping. He's here. Hey, he gets a catch. Gets tossed out. OD finds the Tiny. That's what they want. CM immediately pops for all. Immediately gets interrupted. Tiny, they find him, but they can't do anything with him. In fact, it's the Chen they're going to go for. All right. Two really good kills. Hard attack. Yeah, they'll, they'll take them. Can we get an objective with this? They're applying a lot of pressure. Magnus going straight BKB is his next item. Okay. Tower's going down. Tower is under Dyer's are fortified. 
Odie's up to 14 Sanity's Eclipse charges, which will give him 17 or 700 max mana. His ult hits very hard right now. If he can get yes. like Tiny or uh, Tiny or the Magnus, they take a lot of damage. Him. Speaking of Magnus, yeah. Okay, so it looks like his ult is three charge or his imprisonment is three charges. Ooh, gets hit by the oh my god, dude! It begins. Oh, he is abusing this man. <laughs> Twenty-five now. doing well. He needs to Even keep this stack of fire up. Down. Yeah. Yeah. This is this charge thing. Now I just keep like looking at it since you pointed it's, it out. Yeah, <laughs> it's one for arcane orb, three for astral. It's just weird that yeah. it's not anywhere in the tooltip. Yeah, I, I feel like this is like uh, unless it's on halfway, his ult. Halfway through it game is two, on his ult. Cast God dang not it! The time to be reading this tooltip. I need to go into like demo hero mode. <laughs> yeah, it's the counters are on the ultimate. It looks like so. Yeah. One charge. Per arcane or three per astral. Well, I already Charged figured it out, though. So light. thank you. Figured it out, boys. We're good. We're good. And look at our boy Od. Now he's just taking over the enemy jungle. He's not scared of anything. He's going for the aether lens. How do you feel about that one? I actually really like that, especially On with who? the agonims. Uh, Od. He's just going to be the, the the astral imprisonment bot. Yeah. I mean, why not? I, I I would like him to go. He already has the blink. Um, so it is pretty nice for a lot for him to reposition with. Mm -hmm. I would, I don't think it's entirely necessary that he goes for an Aether Lens. I but... think I want him to be more of a right clicker in case something happens to Drow, so you're not just stuck with like the casting OD and the Omni Knight with no uh, right click damage coming out. Yeah, I'd honestly just like to see Kaya Yash or Yasha Kaya Kaya Yasha. Yeah, I think it's a great item. Sanjay Yasha and Kaya. Or Sanj Kaya even, yeah, both are good. <laughs> I mean, he already has Omni, so he doesn't really need the status of this. Yeah. Hey, all the items coming right out. There's minutes. a Quickening Gem again, we love that. Well, let's keep that on the Omni, right? They had it on him almost for the entirety of last game. Very good item. Heldon Sword is good for Tiny. Just a big life steal. I guess, uh, we'll see. Yeah, you mean he has the Paladin Sword's really good, yeah. It, it's damaged and it increases uh, regen in general. Um, yeah. So, ooh, tiny been found. I don't think he's in trouble though. Yeah, Look at this. Teleports out. Clockwork's gonna go for this, I bet. Oh, he ain't done. Oh. Um, Od is here with a blink dagger. Too. Double force. He missed his. Uh, he missed his spell though. They guessed the wrong way. He went bottom. Yeah. Well, they they had the flare up. It's actually interesting. They're they gonna run that way. Zeus. Oh no! And tiny? They found everybody. They want clockwork. This is perfect scenario. Immediately, Omni Knight puts his buff up on OD. God, OD's he... gonna get everyone safe. No, the RP is too big. Brings him in, drops the Sanity's Eclipse. See him on the side. Everyone's sitting there all tricky, but it looks like Georgia Tech playing together. They're going the to relocate after again. the RP, turn right around, and roll over Nightmare Zeus. You are going nowhere. Oh my no. god, it's a massacre, Ricky. Georgia Tech stomping Nightmare here. <sighs> this is rough. Yeah, it's it's like watching this is is difficult because at no point <laughs> does Nightmare really have a way back into this game. Like this this OD Astral, unless he misplays, will always save whoever is getting um, Reaper Scythe. Yeah, it's so perfect. Like uh, this OD build is a good build, but this game it's like emphasized how good it is. Yeah, so he's, like Astral Imprisonment is just the spell. Yeah, he's switching for the the scythe of ice, which I really like. He just oh. can play super aggressive. Backside, got a Chenny. There's a four staff. Clockwork's just making space. Tier yeah. three going down. I love it. Gonna, I don't think you get melee. They're gonna try. I don't think you get the melee racks here. Maybe they do. Oh, yeah, they they're just going back. for it. So they gave quickening charm to Od. Which is pretty sick. The <laughs> astral, uh, astral yeah. cooldowns, why not? Oh my god, that's pretty funny. I mean, yeah, he likes sacking him. He's doing really well. Give him the item if he wants it. Oh, he's going Bloodstone. Yes! That's, that's, uh, do you like that? Is he? I actually have no idea. OD, is he gonna go Bloodstone? 
Yeah, he uh, is. I, uh, I I was thinking earlier, I was like, I'd actually just like him to get a Bloodstone and have spell damage. Like, just get spell amp at this point and be tanky. Yeah, he's just going in. He's just going in as, like, the button presser. He's doing fine on right clicks, too. Yeah, DD on Trow, easy Roche. Very nice. They take it, give it to OD. Here hookshot. we go, hookshot right in. Not gonna get the fight started that they want. Catches Magnus, but not really. That haste, yeah, that was a game-saving haste. That could have been really bad. Yeah, it was. OD? OD is Ooh. playing super aggressive. This is huge. If they, I mean, they, he's they just pinched off Oh my god, oh my god. He he's doesn't hiding. know. He doesn't know. Very close. Oh my god, the item. Mindbreaker, you give that to Drow, right? Like, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I think so. Have her I mean, back, back the wand. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. do it. Or do they give it to CM? And no, she's gonna get the tag on Drow, yeah. Okay, let's see. Smoke out. We have all of the spells. Every single spell up for Nightmare. How are we going to initiate it? On the OD that has Heavenly Grace and Aegis? I don't know. They have Repair Kit if they can keep this tower, or the tower, yeah. this barracks alive. Tiny starting the fight. He's dropping low. OD is very happy in this position. Immediately OD goes in, takes someone else out of the fight. Oh, Magnus, Magnus does not get the RP. Goes for the BKB, but they're going to save him. Great alt coming up from Omni Knight, actually dodging the Avalanche with the Skewer. OD is not going to back out, and the, the Georgia Tech team is going to follow him up the high ground. First, we're going to deal with Chen. Aegis is popped. Wicked sick. Outworld of Hour coming back. The clumsy net holding Necrophos in. Holding him right where OD wants him. He drops the hammer. He finishes forward. him He's off. He blinks him. in. He wants more. He's ending the game. He's ending their hopes, Ricky. He doesn't stop. Yeah, this is just really well played by Georgia Tech. Fantastic. I just love their team play. Like, they're so clearly coordinated. They're on the same page. They push together. It's like, it's refreshing to watch them play. I really love it. I just don't know how you give them Omni twice. Like, at the end of the day, like, I'm looking <laughs> sure, yeah. I'm looking at game one, and to me, the biggest issue for them was the Omni Knight. And then game two... Omni was MVP. He just had a free lane. Like, they just he just gets to do whatever he wants bottom. And yeah. it's, it's so rough. Seriously, I agree. Omni is the hero of the series, not just the game. Clockwork, you know it's good when Clockwork goes for the battery assault damage. That's such a fun level 15 talent. Oh yeah. I mean he's he yeah. owned this game, right? He's both right? supports but can't do anything against Clockwork. <laughs> and that's an issue that Nightmare's having is both their supports, I think. First two picks they didn't get a stun. Chen and Zeus were a couple times able to show their strength, but their, their role of support was unable to be filled. Okay, well we have in final defense coming up from Nightmare, but looks like they're gonna back right off. Blink in OD, do it. Catches the tiny. He's just getting more, uh, getting more stacks for his ult there. Yeah. That's all that matters. <laughs> Dragon Lance on Drow. She's just having fun. Magnus wants to go. I mean, they don't have RP. I don't know how they would. Yeah. Their best case scenario is like finding an RP into a tiny, but even then, with all of that, there's just Guardian Angel. And every time he gets a solid RP, they just get G8 and. Omni's going, he has an Ags now. So what do you do at this point? You can never like zone out the Omni from the ult at this point. I really yeah, like it's... the itemization from him this game. Last game, he built a ton of ores. <laughs> this game, he just built a pipe and rushed Ags. Like, why not? He's he's kind of like Doom in the sense that you just, you, you got you got nice buttons to press and then you just build whatever your team needs. Smoke and I think that's, nightmare. that's how you excel as an Omni player. And that's what we're seeing. They have vision here. Oh, and there's the Oh Astral. my God. Someone's been captured. Save him. Ooh, a second capture. Omni, there we go. Heavenly Grace. OD ready to rock and roll. Clockwork going in. OD facing off against a BKB Tiny and uh, Magus, but a great Astral is going to buy time after the BKB is popped. On the backside, Drow trying to uh, dance around and doing a great job. And now OD forgotten about, but you can't forget him when he's on the backside, beating everyone on your team up. Pops the Bloodstone, pops the Tiny. BKB is now popped on Magnus before he gets popped by the Georgia teams completely surrounding him. Where's your team, Magnus? Oh, OD already killed all of them. Sorry, sir. There's nothing you can do. Not just you, but your team. Georgia Tech are unstoppable. Yeah, I mean, they're they're like, that was kind of like that desperation smoke, right? The last, yeah. last dish effort to try something and find something happen. in this game if you catch Georgia Tech out of position, but they're just playing very disciplined, staying together as five, making sure not not to, to throw the lead that they already have, and this is looking like it's going to be a very, very I love it. convincing 2-0 here from Georgia Tech. I feel like I feel like Georgia Tech's game one was just a warm up for this because this is disciplined Dota. 
As that, I say that draw is just tanking tower damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, hookshot Astral, both players looking to bad manner. Oh, push back by the cogs. Ghost Shroud, keep him oh. up. Hammer, nope, you're not staying up for long. Yeah, Ghost Shroud does not The help horn is blown. They called it. Mm -hmm. That was a great series, Ricky. 2 0 for Georgia Tech, demonstrating they are the superior team tonight. They will continue to go undefeated in the East bracket. Now, Georgia Tech, I think going into this, we're. Are, were undefeated, right? They haven't lost a single match. Both, both teams were undefeated. Uh, Georgia Tech was 2-0 for everything. And 6-0, six, six, uh, six and oh, every match was a 2-0. And Nightmare is 5-0. and oh, Every match but one was a 2-0. They're yeah. obviously a 2-1 in there. Crazy game for them. Mm -hmm. Well, they played very well. Showed why they were undefeated. However, Georgia Tech shows why they continue to be undefeated with a fantastic performance especially in game two and a huge shout out to the omni knight although both games the mid player on georgia tech did fantastic yeah well let's go ahead and show your beautiful face here to our viewers because i know that's what they're really waiting for so hello everyone <laughs> We're back yeah i mean at the end of the day that was that was a fantastic series the game i think game one was um obviously a lot closer but game two here i think both came down to just Georgia Tech having a better draft, but this game in particular, there was no way you were shutting down this OD. Drow Ranger had a fantastic lane top, and then Omni Knight just gets to do whatever he wants bottom. And if you're going to let all three cores kind of free farm at that point, you're not in for a good time. Nope, I agree. And, and uh, yeah, like, uh, again, I feel like game one was just the warm up for Georgia Tech in that fantastic close series, 50 minutes. Game two, Georgia Tech did the exact same thing they did in game one, but they did it better they executed much better it was a smooth win 33 minutes they cut 20 minutes off the clock they picked up omni knight again and they just took fight after fight scrimmage after scrimmage slow, slowly pressured the map and took advantage of uh, the powerful spells on omni knight you know the first time we saw it was the magnus rp by the roshan pit magnus goes in rp sorry heavenly grace is that magnus you actually just put yourself way out of position and we're going to take this fight and that momentum is going to keep going all the way until uh, the ancient fell yeah i mean at the end of the day georgia tech Looks like they just came slightly better prepared, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they deserve it, right? 2-0. Very well played the, by them. The opening support duo from Nightmare in the draft uh, was... It, it did not perform, I think, uh, in the way that Nightmare wanted it to perform. Mm -hmm. well, Zeus-chan opener. Any, uh, any final words here for the viewers tonight before we uh, take yeah, off? Yeah, uh, final thoughts is... Uh, I'm glad to be back. Final thoughts on the first week back. I'm glad to be back. Back with you, Ricky. Back with the games. Back with the fans. Back with the show business. So, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, I love it. Happy to it's be back. first first uh, first week back here for you know the second half of the season, and we're off to a good showing, right? This is where things are really going to start to heat up. We're going to see the mm -hmm. teams really push for their playoff spots, and uh, oh yeah, playoffs see. are coming up. Georgia Tech looking pretty good. Holding that uh, looking power good. ranking top 10 for sure after this one. And and Nightmare looking good, but when it comes to playoffs, man, lost series means you're out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. They're still good for now, but now they know they got to step it up a bit. Maybe that's uh, maybe this is what Nightmare needs for us to see them have a successful playoff run. Absolutely. For now, we'll just keep casting the good games with the boys every Monday night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before we take off, though, I'm going to show you guys a little something, something here from, from, us, from our sponsors. Pretty neat. Mm-hmm. So this year, as most of you know, our big sponsor is, is GameStop, right? They've been helping out a ton with the league. Thank you, GameStop. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so obviously they, they partnered with us for the 2019-2020 season. Um, they've also introduced something called GameStop Weeklies, which is a series of different types of games that you can check out um, every week. Uh, it will feature you know different games each week but it's a lot of fun to kind of just get out check the other areas of the community that you maybe not uh, get to experience you know in csl if you're just playing dota the whole time yep. <laughs> the other thing is they uh have some gaming clinics that they have set up and you can check those out on their website at gamestop.com esports um those are pretty sick as well so definitely give them uh give them a little looks through but at the end of the day thank you to gamestop thank you to collegiate starley thank you very much gamestop Thank you, CSL. Right?
thank you, CSO, for letting me, giving me an opportunity to cast a great game with great friends and to work with someone as fantastic as Ricky. Aw, right back at you, buddy. That's going to do it for us here tonight, everyone. Thank you all for Have watching. Good night. Enjoy it. See you guys next time. Oh, no, I didn't prepare the outro screen. <laughs> professional and take some and you wake up with your problems